Wanna Go Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. So today, we are starting the show. With Mike Francesa reading out golf scores for people in his audience who don't know how to find the golf scores. Oh my gosh. <laughs> are you ready? I am Palma plus seven. Oh. You have to tell us Palma. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm plugged in. Can you hear? Oh, sorry. Is Jesse plugged in? I don't know. <laughs> See, this is where you, you, gotta, you, start. Can't, you can't catch you can't catch start. You guys got to be on your, on your toes. Great start here, Adam. Get on your toes. Yeah. Get yeah. on your, I don't know what that means, though. Get on your toes. What am I supposed to do when I, I'm on my toes? That's your ready stance. Yeah. That is not, yeah, that yeah. is the worst stance that you could possibly have already. No, it's good for changing directions. Oh, my Jesse, God. Jesse, maybe keep those headphones away from the mic. Maybe, oh, God. Maybe <laughs> tell me to put on my headphones. They're going to play something out of headphones. <laughs> Feedback, dog. All right. Ready? You know, if you've just started listening to the show, you can stop. You can like you don't have to finish it. Why? Why would? What well, because it started about? so bad. Like you could just you can no. Just punch it's only it up out. from here. You know, Jesse. No, you see, you sell low. We're, it's we're like, like being on the Brimaco Mountain. Yeah, you can only go up, <laughs> but you're at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You that's could, true. No, you can also stay at the bottom though. No, but which you can't is not much the show. <laughs> and think about how much fun it will be on the way down. Exactly. After you've gone up the chairlift. We're merely stepping on the chairlift. You could also, like, fall and hurt yourself. <laughs> you take that risk every time you listen to this podcast. Steve will hit his prime when he's a grandfather. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was raised by a nervous Italian woman. That's Why do you think I'm like this? So here's Mike Francesa reading golf scores for people in his audience who don't know how to find golf scores. Well, I love Palma plus seven. Uh... Oh. <laughs> It's already painful. <laughs> Grillo, plus six. <laughs> Yang, uh, Wei Yang, six. Watson, Bubba Watson, plus six. Duffner, plus six. <clears throat> he has read five Roger scores. Harrington, plus five. <laughs> Daly, plus five, with his caught. With... What is this card? Didn't work that much today. Matt Fitzpatrick five plus five. Oh my god. Lee Westwood, Shane Lowry plus five. I'm gonna make you sit through this whole thing. Why? Why? Uh. Just because you watched Tyler Game of Thrones last plus night. Four. Oh. Patrick Reed plus four. Sergio plus four. I don't know Stetson any of these plus people. Plus four. Snedeker plus four. These are all made up. Thomas Pitas uh, uh, plus four. Furyk plus Still four. Still forty seconds. No way. McElroy's plus three with three to play. Canadian. In trouble. No. Irish. What? Oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> no. Who's the Canadian? And uh, Hadwin. Yeah. Also, uh, Connor. The guy who is the talk of the town right now is well. There's two. One's Tiger Woods, who's plus two. You don't have and to the do the show every day. Kepka, who's minus seven. They will play together tomorrow in the afternoon. You'll flip flop. Uh, with the tea times. <laughs> that was a minute and 40 of the most compelling radio you've ever that heard in your life. That segment <laughs> is why there's speed bumps on the side of the highway. Do you want to hear the best part of all Holy. This? There's two best parts. The, the you way, know how many people drifted off to the side, and they jerked awake? That's him. Oh, my now, there God. Was, there was a clip of him, uh, and even Sports Illustrated picked it up, where he appears to fall asleep. Again? The yeah. For but, the second time. But we, I mean, I, everybody saw it already, so I wanted to pull this one. And I wanted to say that there's a couple things. First of all, you need to follow back after this. I haven't. I don't have any more clips to play. You can take the headphones. Oh, thank God. Um, but you got to follow back after this for all your Mike Francesa updates. Steve is not allowed to follow them because, again, stop sending these clips to Steve. Stop it. Don't I'm send very, them. I'm a send good boy. them to me. My DMs are open. Send them to me. I'm a good boy. If you boy. want them, if you want to talk about them. But with Mike, this is not his. This is not his radio show. That's remember the podcast through the Mike Francesa app that you had to sign up for? Yes. And it costs more than Netflix every month? Yeah. For four episodes? Why I joined The Athletic, but it's that. His own app. I gotcha. He did that on his app. So you've paid now more than you pay Netflix for this show. No way. And you get to watch that. Oh, my God. From his living room. It's amazing. 
It's amazing. And, you know, and back after this at, you know, Funhouse on uh, Twitter makes a really good point. As you listen to this hideous, hideous bit of radio, keep in mind that the real Michael K is still unable to beat this guy. So Mike, Mike Francesa is still number one in the afternoons, even going up against uh, ESPN. <laughs> It's pretty unbelievable. That's wild, man. <laughs> Isn't that That's crazy? wild. Now, who listens to the radio? No one. <laughs> Adam, get out of this business. I know, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Now, uh, you know that we've uh, partnered with Crown Royal. Sure do. You know that we have to name a crown. Someone's got to get the crown mm. every episode. Yeah. So if you look at this weekend, mm. producer Jesse. Yes. Stephen A. Dangle. Me. Yeah. Who gets the crown? I am going to say, <laughs> with with a great performance mm -hmm. that I saw live last night, I'm going to say Marcus Saul. You were you were at the game. Last I was night? at the game. Wow! Because Mrs. Dangle is just like impulse. Ah! And I'm like, oh, oh no! Shit, yeah. I really That's an expensive win. impulse. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> was it fun though? It was. <laughs> It sure was. Double overtime. Not bad. Yeah, I'm glad I got more basketball than we paid for. For sure. You got double, You got, well, 150%. Uh, mm -mm. <laughs> right? uh, something. No, not quite. No. Because overtime's only five minutes. Oh, right, right. right we right, technically right. got <laughs> less than an extra quarter. Yeah. But double overtime mm -hmm. is wild. You got an extra 20% because it'd be 10 minutes, which is roughly... That of 12 minutes. That's it's around 20%. It's funny. I was thinking to myself, I, I went, okay, wait, that was double overtime. And it was still less than a hockey game. It was 58, 58 minutes versus 60. And I was just thinking how the please like my sport crowd would be about that. And then I looked at the fact that Kawhi Leonard played 52 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the most an NHL player has ever played in one game? I will look that up and tell you. I'm going to say, because, I mean, there's been some crazy overtime games over the years. Sure. I'm going to guess 42. And it was like a quadruple overtime. Peter Nedved. Something like that. Man, 52 minutes is nuts. But Marcus all played so much of the game with five fouls, and I couldn't believe... In a game where three guys fouled out that he mm -hmm. didn't foul out. I'll give Marcus all the crown. In a game that, that Kyle Lowry fouled, fouled out and it, and they continued to play for an hour. Yeah. Like that's Norman crazy. Powell. Yeah. A bench player fouled out. He wasn't a bench player last night, though. No, he was great. He was great. Jesse. I know basketball. The, I'm good at this. The answer is <laughs> Sergey Zuboff. Yeah. 63 minutes. 21 seconds in a 5 OT game. Wow. Ducks and, Ducks and Stars. Did the Stars win? I don't know. Ah. You got to look that up. I just have that answer from a Reddit. Mike it. Babcock would have a heart attack. Imagine. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Austin <laughs> Matthews would still get 17 minutes yeah. in that game. Leafs lose in uh, the quintuple overtime. Austin <laughs> Matthews, 17 minutes. <laughs> Leo, like, Kamra Leo Komarov. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. <laughs> a lot of penalty kills out there. Zach Hyman, goalie. <laughs> <laughs> Blown ACL at all. Or whatever it was. Oh, that man. was April 24th, 2003. Oh, so that was during that absurd... absurd. Um, April 24th, 2003. That must have been when the Ducks... Remember the Ducks were ass, but J.S. Jaguar was just like, yeah, hey, we're going to make the cup final anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Ducks won 4-3. Oh, oh, my God, and they lost! Sucks. Wow. Uh, imagine what your recovery would have to be after that. Like, if, imagine, like if that's not the series winner. Oh, and you have to that was game it. one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, game two would be wow. hilarious to watch. Oh. What a carnival. <laughs> Ducks won, though. Yeah. Ducks won that series. And you know what? More guys would have been out there than the Sharks had in uh, game four there. Or game five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was bananas. Um, I want to talk about the Sharks in a second, but I do need to get Jesse's crowd. Jesse, who are you giving the Crown Royal Crown to, my friend? Is uh, it even going to be hockey-related? Ah! Uh, the Crown Royal Crown for... This weekend, I don't know. You already went basketball. Hmm. You can, well, do basketball. can I? I can, should I do hockey? You no, can, I don't think it matters now. No, no it right. doesn't matter at all. You don't Once the leagues are back, then it matters because that's okay. what hockey's about. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to Kevin Durant. Oh, okay, why? He didn't even play. Exactly. <laughs> Kevin. Durant. 
Durant got the perfect scapegoat for leaving for uh, New York what this weekend. It? The Golden State Warriors proving they don't need him to win. Oh. Now he's sitting at home, and the entire narrative on the entire internet, because he loves the internet, oh, is yeah. Golden State doesn't need Kevin Durant. Yeah, but they didn't. That was the whole uproar. They didn't, uproar they didn't, need, they didn't need, him. need him years ago. Exactly. When they won without him. Exactly. And now they're doing it again. But this playoffs, it's been the Kevin Durant show. He was he, when he was in the lineup, he was lighting it up, and Steph Curry was terrible. He went yeah. a whole half with zero points. And he was sh- shooting terribly. Couldn't mm-hmm. couldn't Dare hit his shots. Kyle Lowry esque. Kyle Lowry, yes. <laughs> Lowry was fine. Danny Green is the guy I was yelling at yesterday. And now, all of a sudden, Kevin Durant's not there, and Steph Curry is the greatest player on earth again. Clay Thompson's showing up. Draymond Green's showing up. 35-year-old Andre Iguodala still got, got yep. it all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And they're good. They're Golden State 2015 all over again. Kevin Durant sitting at home being like, I'm going to leave, and it's going to be awesome because no. they don't need me. He doesn't spend that much time on the internet, though. No, you sure? No, he doesn't read the apps <laughs> and what people are saying. No. No. Are you are you thinking the burners are burning? Today? I think the burners are burning, and he's reading all the writers, oh. and he's very oh, happy. Yeah. Man, mm-hmm. there there's Petty, and then there's Durant Petty, man. Mm-hmm. It's like if you're not a hockey, it's funny. It is so funny to see Boston because Boston is such a like Pete Pete Blackburn um, uh, alluded to it. In Boston, you are either a basketball fan or you're a hockey fan. There's not both. In Toronto, yeah. you're just a Toronto fan. Also, Pete's so bored. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can tell he's bored already. He's so, ready. He's ready for the finals. The Bruins are already guaranteed. Well, this is old news now, but they're guaranteed to have 11 days off before the oh. Stanley Cup final even begins. How do you even do that? Man, I saw a Savage tweet. Uh, the Bruins should invite the Leafs for a scrimmage to stay sharp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I, funny. St- we're that already funny. dead. Yeah, no, that's well, funny, though. We just That is it. hilarious. No, that's really um, good. I'm giving the crown to myself. To yourself, I'm giving Adam. it to me. Uh, you know why that? I'm giving it to me? Why are you because giving it to after you? after all the crap I took from you, from you, about Game of Thrones, I was right. This season you sucks. No. This season sucks, and I was right. I was right. It was what? terrible from the beginning, and that that episode was a harbinger of things to come. It was the it was the that that dark episode <laughs> was the whole reason this season sunk because it was the mindset that went into making an episode like that goof the entire season. They fucked this up so bad. Last night's episode was so it wasn't even bad. It was boring, and that's the worst. Well, when you walk, when you walk away with apathy, that's the worst. And they stunk, and I'm I'm giving myself we, the crown because of all the shit that I took from you. Because I was right. When do we crap. when do we get to do Game of Thrones later? Are we doing because we shouldn't do it now, no, right? No, we'll do it later. No, we okay. should wait. We should, we should wait. wait. We'll wait to the end. I can't wait. Till, I can't wait to get Steve's take on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. on, your takes on it are actually fun. They're the fun ones. You know what's funny is. SL and I spent the whole car ride home from the Raptors game talking about Game of Thrones. <laughs> so when I know a lot about a show I know nothing about. See when you're so when you uh, when you when you sit down on your couch tonight to watch whatever show you're watching now. Maybe it's Barry on HBO because apparently that's a really good show. Maybe it's the fourth season of Silicon Valley. Yeah. Maybe it's one of the fine offerings on Crave TV or. Whatever Steve watches. Maybe you're sitting at home and watching Austin Matthews goal compilations <laughs> from this year or the year before that. Maybe, just maybe, consider having a Crown Royal. Our good friends at Crown Royal, just thank maybe. you. And ask you to drive responsibly. Absolutely. And drink responsibly, of course. That as well. Do both those things. Um, <laughs> drive responsibly. I don't think you got that one right. I don't think there's anything wrong with driving responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> In general, have you seen that the uh, the signs on the highway? The, the signs on the highway don't care anymore. They say, get off your phone, just drive. Yeah. That's it's, the slogan it's now. It's sort of, yeah, but it doesn't work. I like that. I feel like that gets through more than you know. Oh, it's very unsafe. Over there. Hey, none of it gets. Hey, through. it's it's like the Everybody Philly knows. the Philly parking lot uh, supervisor. Hey, what are you nuts? Get off your phone! I think things are going to change when people have fully integrated car systems. When you've got like, if you ask anybody, and I just got it, so I'm I'm speaking from from very little experience, but I have to tell you, getting Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which is the same thing, that's not a thing. You what just made a that up. game changer. I didn't know that was You a can thing. do literally everything that you could do on your phone without looking at your phone. So instead of, but instead of, say, like, say you're using Waze, which Steve refuses to use because he's afraid that they're going to track him. Elliot Freed, because Elliot Friedman, no, Elliot Friedman because, told me it's malware and I not, trust though. his sources. Well, <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just Google Maps? 
I just I trust him. The one. It's not. It's not it's different. It's not a trust. I trust it's different. Him. It's not the same thing. I was in. I was in an Uber with Elliot Friedman in Boston, and he was. I was like, uh, he was talking to the cab driver about uh, ways, and he's like, I don't, I don't use ways. It's malware. Okay, use another one. Malware. That's from, not malware. What's mal about it? Also, I it's don't not know, a virus. But Elliot Friedman said it, so I believe him. Jesse, what's ma- what? Where malware is-, is just another word for a virus on your computer, like the old virusy terms. Hey, my Windows XP got a virus. No, he's worried. Oh. He's worried <laughs> that Jordan antivirus. Exactly. They still. I'm. <laughs> a, I'm being facetious about malware. It's a, it's a serious thing, but yeah, it's also sure. not a threat from ways. It's, it's, it's a huge. Threat. They're really definitely your taking your information and selling it to advertisers. Sure. But everybody's doing that. No. So don't use your phone, Steve. Steve, Steve who uses <laughs> Facebook Messenger all the time, which can, by yeah. the way, record you without your knowledge at any time. They, they have the, rights, microphone on they have right the rights to use your microphone. Facebook, you're garbage. There. Whoa. <laughs> and now they're going to make my phone explode. So you're worried about... Ways tracking where you drive, which is just Oshawa to here and back. So when you and have to get farm boy. when you have to get from <laughs> I, hey, Oshawa, no, that's Mrs. Dangle, and it's on the way home from school. When you have to get from Oshawa to Toronto, you refuse to use Google Maps to tell you the best route to get there, or if there's traffic. And the best part or, is that he's always late. And, you, and he's like, I can't believe this road; it's terrible. <laughs> and he has the perfect app to get him around that. You don't need to use Waze. Just use anything. <laughs> Just use a damn GPS. <laughs> you live up the street. Walk that's, that's here. True. That is true. Walk here. That's true. What app do you use for that? <laughs> Your feet. So you don't even wash. You dirt bag. <laughs> oh, oh, talk about all high and mighty because you don't wash your legs. Your wife posts that picture of your cussed feet from the dog park. <laughs> you don't even wash your pants. You're disgusting. You disgust me out of while. You're awful. I don't... Both of you, <laughs> Jesse. As far as I know, his hygiene's fine, so I have nothing to yell at you. I have very good hygiene. Yeah. If anything, I have too good of hygiene. Yeah, too jeans, good. At, yeah. yeah. He wears his jeans very high. <laughs> very. Um. Oh. <laughs> when are you becoming a dad, Adam? <laughs> oh my god! A couple weeks. <laughs> that was. Oh. God. All I'm saying. All I'm saying is this. To move us forward here. A St. Louis Boston Cup final, which looks like it's going to be. There's been one NHL game since our last show, (laughs) or maybe two. A St. Louis Boston Cup final will be perfect because it's going to set up another Bobby Orr flying through the air moment, but this time it'll be Brad Marchand, and you know it. Oh, I'm here for it. I am. I am now too. I've accepted my fate. (laughs) If it happens, it happens. This is going to (laughs) suck. It can't get. We're already at zero. You can't go less than zero. You know? Well, well the three options. <laughs> According to Mike Frances's golf scores, you can. I don't know. <laughs> in golf. So, yeah. they, hey, if we go less than zero in golf, then we're doing well. Yeah. Right. You know? There you go. <laughs> According to sports radio Ray Romano. <laughs> oh, we got a plus six. <laughs> Robert. Oh, my God. Um, so, our three options mm-hmm. for those of you still playing the Boston Bruins uh-huh. and everything, all the fun that comes with them, the San Jose Sharks. And all the fun that comes with them. You, who you might be playing for them tomorrow what? after all of their injuries. Seriously. <laughs> or Alex Steen, Tyler Bozak, and Carl Gunnarsson <laughs> of the St. Louis Blues. Which I, 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 don't, I don't want anyone to win the cup. Can we forego the cup this year? I'm done. Oh, what about Joe? Oh, uh, what about I Joe? Been, I would like the Sharks to win. Mm-mm. The Sharks... Are probably the um, they're the easiest to cheer coolest. for. Coolest? Mm-hmm. No, I I'm cheering. I'm that. cheering against Eric Carlson. Whoa! Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <Okay. Jesse? laughs> yeah, I, I'm abandoning what I was about to say. Why are you cheering against Eric Carlson? A list of reasons to cheer against Eric Carlson. Let's First and this. foremost, absolutely nobody is cheering against Eric Carlson. Nobody. One person sitting here is number one. I only need one reason. Oh, all right. No. So that's the number one reason. You cost your team a game by going out there and being the hockey guy and trying to play through a clearly injured groin. Mm -hmm. When you couldn't play hockey, you said, I'm going to go out there and play hockey. Mm. Stubbornness cost them a game. And that's Eric Carlson's fault. I have a rebuttal question. Yes. And it's only a question. Yes. Would you not blame... The people that manage that situation. So you've got a coach, right, mm-hmm. who can choose not to dress Eric Carlson. Peter DeBoer said 
Mm-hmm. From what we got from the player and our staff, mm-hmm. we had we should play Eric Carlson. So he told them he was fine. And he went out there and caused the first three goals of the game all by himself. Hmm. That contract is going to be something. Going to be yeah, something, I, I man. I feel like it's, it's another Shattenkirk for the Rangers. I feel like it's going to be the Rangers, and I feel like it's going to be another Shattenkirk. Ooh. I think, and I, and, I, and I don't mean that right away. Like, next season, I'm, in, I'm inevitably going to have this take thrown back in my face by somebody. Some Rangers fan, some Sens fan, somebody. Um, He's going to put up points no matter no, what. No, my problem with the Carlson contract isn't year one or two. Mm-hmm. It's every year after. Um, mine is with years one and two and going forward. Like, listen, <laughs> dude, every dude. game he plays forever. Every game it's going forward. Steve. It's gonna be, you're going to have, you, wow, next year's going to be fun. Oh, I you know. won't have a single oh, good game. One. Oh, yeah, this year was so easy. No one gave me any shit this year. Be like, Nothing hey, ever came back to bite hey, me this year. Hey, Steve, check out this really cool Eric Carlson highlight next January. Next- and you'll be like, no. Nope, that's a problem. <laughs> Man. The guy, he can put up 70 points next year. Sure. I wouldn't even blink. Sure. I'd be like, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. 70, 80. Yeah, 70 by February. You know, 70 by the trade deadline or whatever. But, dude, the guy in his own end, it's getting more and more it's shocking. Bad. I don't know why he, he was move. on the ice. Yeah. Because, okay. It was it was tragic watching him end. try to play. Yeah. Dude. He just you're, gives the puck back. Gives the puck back. And then you exit in the, what was it, the second? He played three minutes in the second and then left the game? <sighs> yeah. He couldn't finish. You're, you're Pete DeBoer. You're the Sharks training staff. If Carlson wants to play, how do you tell him no? You say no. Because mm-hmm. you're a fucking coach and you get paid millions of dollars to just say no. Just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Just it does should. not work. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Maybe it I ought agree. to change. That's why I'm Maybe sure. this is a perfect example yeah, of why yeah. it ought and to they change. And they want him to stick around, too. Oh, so I you're going to tell him no? Oh, I, I do. If I'm Pete DeBoer, well, first off, if I'm the general manager, I put that squarely on Pete DeBoer. The player will always say they're good to go. That is it. If you ask any player, even right after a concussion, they'll be like, yeah, sure. Marbles are scrambled and all. <laughs> yep. They'd be, they'd be, they could have been shocked. And they'd still be like, you know, I, I think the shoulder's feeling better. Zach Hyman with his knee. Oh, I think, knee, it's yeah, I think it's getting better. That's, it's hilarious and tragic. That's what they do. Also, the think of how point, long ago that was. The Imagine the Leafs were still playing. Well, exactly, and the whole point is to separate the medical staff. Like Mike Babcock says that I don't ask the med- I don't ask the player. I mm-hmm. talk to the medical staff, so I don't want I don't put pressure on the player. Which is how it should be. Which is how it should be. So if the medical staff then if then if the medical staff told Peter DeBoer that Eric Carlson was good to go, then the medical staff ought to be fired. Go. <sighs> no, like, you can't look at that, and Jesse's right. You can't look at that and go. That is acceptable. That's not acceptable for his long-term health, which they should be looking mm-hmm. out for. It's not acceptable for the Sharks' short-term health on the ice. They could have iced a player who could yeah. skate. You had one period of a player, or you get three periods of a player. It's, God, that's so, I think I think it's really easy for us to sit here. And obviously the logical thing is, yeah, it's an argument that I've made a thousand times. It's an argument that started in the 2015 TJ. Stanley Cup Final. Tyler Johnson, who yeah. was incredible those playoffs, was useless in the Stanley Cup Final. He couldn't shoot. His wrist was screwed up. <laughs> so you're telling me Tyler Johnson with no wrist is better than your best reserve. I just don't it's believe like that. Zach Hyman, who is not good at faceoffs, going up against Patrice Bergeron with half a knee. Yeah. Like, Zach Hyman, who is decent at faceoffs, but is not. He's not at that level. He's not a center. He's not a full-time center, yeah, the guy. He's great against the Arizona Coyotes at center. Yeah, yeah him and Derek Stepan li- lining up. I'm, I'm sure it'll go 50-50. It's like the Phantom it's Chrysler 300. On. It's, it's like the Phantom Chrysler 300 yes, thing. Yeah. Bergeron at 5-on-5, five five, it was Phantom versus Phantom. Yeah. It was him versus Tavares. And life was not fun for either of them. And what would have been greatest if it was Tavares versus Bergeron on that, too. Uh, they they're, they got to have a center. Friggin' play in the penalty kill next year. See how we made it about the least? Crazy. What about you have a center or a winger with a torn ACL? Ooh. I just... You see? You know? You know? Ah. Sometimes you gotta let the other team play, too. Like, you gotta have let them into the game a little bit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Handicap yourself. <one laughs> yeah, you gotta say. make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's right. For sure. Sometimes no. you want to start at a, at a minus 10. 
and see where you can go. It's a better storyline. <laughs> mm. Maybe that's what Mike was going for. Or if it was golf, a plus ten. Hey, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we got to, uh, so always got to set up the comeback. Eric Carlson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got, with the cart. <laughs> I just, you know what? I am yeah. sad. People, they, they wrote an article about Logan Couture today not winning a cup. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, I think the only reason they wrote it is because Jumbo Joe's had about 80 written about him. Well, Logan Couture is having a special playoffs. It's it's not quite the same story here because Carlson, Canadian team, the Sens weren't supposed to do anything, mm-hmm. really, um, and they made it farther than anyone expected, and Carlson playing with a broken foot. That was back when he was with the Sens. Hey, Carlson playing injured. Uh, yeah, I mean, right. no wonder he thinks he can do it. He's done it before. Yo, they should Kawhi load management and manage him, whatever team gets him. Yeah. Like, play him in, like, 40 games to oh, save yeah. for the playoffs. Something like that, yeah. 100%. I mean, then you got to get him to agree to it, and all of a sudden it's a completely different conversation. But the Sharks were supposed to be the juggernaut. Mm-hmm. Um, they were supposed to have, yeah, I mean, Jesus, Brent Burns or Carlson, you don't need to say any more. Uh, but then their offense is pretty good, too. And Logan Couture is having a special playoff. And for him to not win a cup with this performance and not even make the Stanley Cup final, it is kind of tragic, man. It is. It is kind of tragic. My question is, is you know, with with St. Louis, I mean, the game isn't until tomorrow, so obviously we don't know how it's going to have, go. Have we ever seen a team erase a 3-2 series deficit? Yes. It's impossible. It can't be done. It can't be done. We are going to talk as though that St. Louis holds the stranglehold, because they do. What are the Sharks if they don't win? Um, A team that went for it and didn't quite make it, and I think that's okay. I really do think that's okay, and maybe that's a loser's attitude, but, I mean, you're in the Final Four. Mm -hmm. At some point, it's a little bit out of your hands. People talk about, oh, determination and never giving up and this and that. Eric Carlson has not given up. Determination might 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 cost the problem. Yeah, yeah, like it. I mean, shit. You're one of the best. You could argue you're one of the best four teams in the NHL. It's it's what I've said uh, for the longest time. All you can do is put yourself in striking distance. Mm -hmm. The Sharks put themselves in striking distance in September. Uh, Arguably before that. And they've done it for the last ten years. And they've done it for the last ten years. And you could honestly argue. The Sharks have been the best team over the past decade, mm-hmm. and you can still come up cupless. Now, I guess my my point had more to do with what do the Sharks do from here? Now, we said that last year, um, and Logan Couture sure is a great player, but I, you know, Joe Thornton probably not coming back, um, or maybe not. Who knows? Who knows? I bet he does. Um, yeah. But you've got you've got some expiring deals on the team. Like if I am a free agent, I don't look at San Jose as a destination where I'm like, yes, we we can, other than the next two years, we can do this. I don't think, I think that they are going to be the LA Kings in no time. And that's because they've got a lot of they're, contracts, they're a ticking. lot of money. Yeah. They're ticking. And so if you're a free agent and you're signing a long-term deal, because nobody wants to sign a three or four-year deal anymore, <laughs> it's you want to sign the long se- seven-year deal, who is going to sign there? Like, if you're Eric Carlson, even, do you look at that and you go, well, I mean, Mayor Eric Carlson may have two years left. Who knows? Like, you, you don't even yeah. know. You might love the lifestyle. You might love the city and the people and the fans and everything. And I don't blame you for that. But if I were, if I was John Tavares sitting at that meeting last year on July 1st, and I look at all of the, the pieces in front of me, you got Tampa, you got Dallas, you got Toronto, you got Boston, you've got uh, the New York Islanders. Every single one of those teams to me, Looks like a situation on the upswing other than San Jose. They are on the down. I think... Squarely on the down. I think players look at it from the perspective of where to live, which CJ, when he was here, brought up as like a... It's an enormous factor. Amazing place to live. I think you're looking at it wrong in terms of the... What it's going to be like in three years. Dude, if I sign a seven-year deal with the Sharks or whatever, I know I have a real shot at the cup for sure for the first two years. Mm -hmm. And after that... Who cares? Pfft, whatever. At least the weather's nice. And trade me. Trade like it's it's always a possibility. You know you're you're signing there because like Tavares with the Leafs. You know, hey, it looks like they're going to be good going forward. But they're also good now. Mm-hmm. And they're adding me. I don't know if he's as pompous enough to think that, but and they're adding me. I mean, look at where the Bruins are. Look at how much trouble the Leafs gave them. Ah, ah. He wasn't necessarily wrong. Uh, I don't think the Sharks. 
I don't think they're going to have trouble signing anyone. Ed, how many times have we seen, uh, you know, this guy was very prudent for not signing with that team on the, ah, ah, Kovalchuk was really keeping the future in mind. When he signed with L.A., I never saw that. No, no, exactly. He wanted to live in L.A. Yeah, I, I don't think the Sharks will have a problem. I mean, and the Sharks should be aggressive. They should be really aggressive because for the reasons you just mentioned. And, again, it's just you go for it. You put yourself in striking distance. And if you make it, great. And you look like a genius. And if you don't, you look like a stooge. But the I think, I think the fair way of looking at it is they don't even have to win a cup as long as they... Sharks could be back in the Final Four next year. It wouldn't even shock me. Hmm. I mean, Eric Carlson has helped him greatly. Well, Martin I, Jones being back on his game has helped. And that too, not so much yesterday. But, well, huh, he, he didn't get much help. Um, but, like, I, don't, I think the Sharks would have been fine without Carlson. That's why that trade was so unbelievable. It was like, holy... Sh- I, and they gave I would expect, nothing. Yeah, nothing. I would expect this team to win the cup in a walk. Oh, sorry. I would expect this team to make the playoffs in a walk anyway. Also, the weak division certainly helps. Mm-hmm. And they added Carlson? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's sort of like the debate that's going on now with Kawhi because Toronto has such a defeatist attitude. You know, down two games to nothing, now 2-1. But the, the conversation after, after even the Philly series, after Kawhi hits like... The biggest shot in franchise history, people are talking about, was that good enough? Was the trade worth it? And a lot of people were like, well, yeah, they made the final four, so yeah, it's worth it. I think that's how you sort of got to look at it with the Sharks. Okay. The, I, I just look at their, their cap friendly, and it's not pretty. <clears throat> oh, it's not good. Yeah, but you don't blame them for getting into that situation. No, I don't. No. Uh, yeah. I just wonder well, what they're going to... I wonder what they're going to do from here. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, I mean, you've got... Um, you've got a really great advantage in terms of, you know, just a, a great um, resume, right? You never want to discount that. The people in the NHL are all about the past. They always look at the past. What did you do in the past? That's why they recycle talent so much. It's, you know, well, he won a cup within the last 25 years. <laughs> Quarter century ago, this guy was top of his game. So let's hire him. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that that part of it doesn't, I mean, for me anyway... It's a, um, it's part of the reason that's held the NHL back, but that seems to be the mindset. So you look at the Sharks. So here, here's I brought up their cap friendly, okay? So you've got Brent Burns signed till 2024-25. Not awesome. Mark Edward Vlasic, 25-26. Not awesome. He's 32 now. Yeah. Brent Burns is 34 now. And they're both good. Sure. Justin Braun's got a year left. He's 32. Brendan Dillon's got a year left. He's 28. And then you've got Eric Carlson UFA and Tim Heed UFA on defense. And then on the front front end, Donskoy, Haley, Pavelski, Thornton, Nyquist and, uh, are all UFAs. Mm-hmm. And you got Timo Meyer um, and Kevin LeBlanc who are RFAs. LeBanc. Um, and then you've got, I mean, you look at the, Logan Couture's got a good deal, but he's 30. It's a tumultuous it, offseason. Dude. Yeah, there's you tons of cap room, mm-hmm. lots of free agents. You gotta make some deals. It's like the Blue Jackets. I mean, and Doug Wilson is good at making deals. Give mm-hmm. that. hundred percent. Man's it's, a deal maker. It's sort of like the Blue Jackets, right? Where everyone knows they're in trouble, but no one's quite written them off because right. they have so much space. Yeah, you get, it gives you options. I I mm-hmm. feel like when you do so well for so long, like the Sharks have, mm-hmm. I feel like it'll be relatively easy to convince guys to stay. If they want to stay, they will. Okay. That's what I think it is, man. Um, small little side note. Sure. I was doing my internet sleuthing or whatever. I don't, I don't even know why this happened. But I think it was around 2002, maybe 2003, there was a trade. And it was uh, Cal- uh, San Jose's backup goalie mm-hmm. to Calgary. or their, yeah. Either their backup goalie or their third goalie for a conditional fifth round pick. What that trade ended up being was Mika Kiprasov... For Mark Edward Vlasic. Wow. It's the best nothing trade ever. Wow. <laughs> like, it, funny. It's a nothing trade. And that was mm-hmm. to make room for him. That's a toss. It was. It was <laughs> the Sharks had three goalies, and they weren't sure. I think they thought Toskala was going to be the best, but the three goalies were Kiprasov, Toskala, and uh, Evgeny Nabokov. They had all three at once, and they got rid of Kiprasov for a fifth 
a conditional fifth. Mm-hmm. Then it ended up being Vlasic. It worked so, out for both. It did. Yeah. Sure did. Yeah. It did. I mean, that's a crazy trade. Yeah. You know what though? The Sharks have been to the conference final before, two rounds deep before. Not that Dumbakov was a bad goalie, but if they have Kiprasov, mm. ah, but Kiprasov probably doesn't become Kiprasov there. Right. It's one of those God. one of those big what ifs. Okay. So here's... also, if they uh, resign Carlson, they lose another first round pick, which means they don't have one this year, next year, or the year after. Yeah. So they wouldn't have a first round pick until twenty twenty two. That's the year they, 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 they need to start. Imagine yeah. things go south and Carlson ends up somehow giving the Sens the first first overall pick. Oh, my God. It's not going to happen. It's not, I don't think he's staying there. No? I think he's going to stay no. in San Jose. See, I think he is. No. Really? I don't know. I don't have a good read. I, he's been so secretive. Like yeah. I don't have a good read of... What Carlson's <laughs> thinking? My wife thinks he's going to stay there just because of uh, she. She's a big Melinda and Eric fan. So she follows <laughs> oh, yeah. them both, and she's like, "Well, they seem really happy on Instagram." I'm like, "Who?" Does Expert it? analysis, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Who doesn't seem happy on Instagram? Um, That's amazing. Do you guys think that a GM looks at Carlson and everything that's gone on this year and his injuries and everything and gives him a giant contract for a bunch of years? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You um, think one of the twenty nine does that? Surely twelve yeah, of the twenty nine would do it. Yeah. Um, okay. It might not be what. We thought it was. Yeah. It's not going to be eleven million. Okay. I don't think it's going to be eleven million. I think you're nine to ten. Still um, that high? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's making yeah. eight now. Yeah. So he's got to think. He he wants a raise. What were his stats this year? He he, he puts up points, man, and a lot of people. But can't like, get that. it's the points, and then it's also you look at him in the last three weeks. He's been a shell of Eric Carlson. It's not what goes into the contract. Though. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. But like, he's that, right-handed too. That's a tough thing. Yep. So jack it up a million. <laughs> you know, oh, the guy's left handed and he's very good and he put up all these numbers. Oh, what's that? He's right. Yeah. Jack it up. The points are, by the way, uh, to do 45 points in 53 games. And remember how bad he was to start the year or mm-hmm. how snake bitten I, I guess he was. Guy couldn't couldn't buy anything That's in an Unbelievable amount of points. It's yeah, for a defender. Mm-hmm. It's also 16 points in 19 playoff games. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's still maybe I'm underrating a a game so, in these playoffs. Yeah, maybe what, I'm underrating Eric Olsen. What you need? Well, no, I don't think you're underrating He's him. Special. I think, I think it's he is special. But so was Bobby Orr, and Bobby Orr fell apart. His yeah. body fell apart. Now that's yeah. also has to do with the limitations of surgery back then. Yeah. To, today, with those knee surgeries, Bobby Orr would have played 20 years. Mm-hmm. But Hopefully. the um, the issue here is that sometimes your body doesn't keep up. They just can't handle the rigors in the same way, or you took one injury one, once and, it, and it's created a whole bunch of others in your body or whatever. I'm I'm saying, if, listen, you you need to play Eric Carlson, it sounds like, 53 games to make the playoffs. If you have one, <laughs> one person on your back end that can give you 45, 50 points on defense, pff, play him until you get to that point and you've already made the playoffs. You've, you're, you're set. Hmm. But the problem is, can you commit to a plan where... You you use him in the regular season sparingly, and then in the in the playoffs you play him all the time because you, he is no good to you in the playoffs playing the way he is. So now we're talking about so okay, what does a team like that look like? So so this they already got to be deep. They got to be deep already. They got to be playoff bound already. They got to not need him, but want him. But want him. Sharks. Uh the sharks. <laughs> so and maybe you you're, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the sharks, man. And they're going for it. It's interesting with the Sharks, too. They are, to me at least, a team that I see the Leafs sort of being later on. The Leafs had this incredible depth this year, and it worked against them. Because their coach was like, no, I'm going to run four lines equally. I'm going to put Freddie Goche out there for ten minutes a game. I didn't mind during the regular season. And so what I like about the Sharks is that they rely on their stars. Mm -hmm. They understand that this is a stars league, just like every other league. Because it's playoff time. And that's what you do. That's what you do. I kind of like that. You look at their depth and you're like, ooh, it's th- quite thin. Guess you're going to have to rely on your stars to be your stars. I like that. Don't you? Who do you think's thin? Don't you think the Sharks are, like, like going into next well, year, now. do you think they're going to be a, th- a bit thin? <laughs> well, so uh, I was sort of talking about this yesterday. Um, I ran into someone at the Raptors game, you know, hey, what do you think? You always get the what do you think. Um, I don't. What do I think? I don't. Because it's May. And I think I think it's just 
It's just it's too frustrating to think about how the Leafs are going to do next year or any team is going to do next year because you have no idea who's going to be on that team. How yeah. can I tell you how good or bad they're going to be if I don't know who's going to be on the team? I can tell you what I think is going to happen in certain, you know, oh, I, the Marner deal will, will work out or this guy might get traded, that guy. But it's all, I'm talking out my ass. Right. And I just, I don't know, I find that frustrating to do. I'm nervous enough. Steve. It's before game three. <laughs> Raps need this one. Yes. <laughs> People make a lot of money talking out of their ass. <laughs> I Man. know. Adam played a clip. Ah. <laughs> that wasn't even like an entertaining hot take, though. It was just him reading <laughs> golf Just reading scores. stuff. <laughs> That's what's so interesting about Mike Francesa. Like, when we play Stephen A. Smith or any of the other guys with, like, hot takes, it's like, oh, well, it's an interesting thing to listen to. Mm-hmm. That wasn't even that. That was like watching Game of Thrones last night. It wasn't even interesting. When I was an intern at the Fan 590, um, I'd be working in the bullpen. We'd be cutting clips and everything, and we'd get a call to the bullpen. I don't know who gave the general public this number, but someone would just, some sports fan would just call up the bullpen. Hey, Fan 590, this is Steve. Hey, what's the score of the Raptors game? <laughs> <laughs> that what? was a little while ago. I and then I, that. I tell him, it wasn't that long ago. They, there was a website. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'd tell him or whatever, and then I'd hang up the phone. But So imagine if that conversation went to air. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. Yep. What year was this? Like 2009, 2010. <laughs> not, not 1984. <laughs> it, you know, in Dear sir, stop. That. <laughs> what is the score in the Peach Basket game? Stop. That James Naismith is a revolutionary. Stop. I think the Huskies will win it all this year. Stop. Um, when I look at the way this series is going to end with the Sharks and St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Both, Are we we're writing them off? No, I'm not writing them off. Okay. I'm not writing them off. Okay. But either way. Yes. When it's we write people off, they win. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm not writing. That's why I'm not doing it. I'm not That's doing how it goes. It. The reason that I, I find it this series fascinating because St. Louis has had so you talk, you talk about the San, San Jose Sharks being good for the last decade. St. Louis was good for 30 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They missed. They didn't miss the playoff for 30 years, and they never won. Three Stanley Cup Finals in there. However, those were the early expansion years, and that was weird. Okay, not counting those, ever since then, it's weird. They've been good the entire time, but never really came close. Never conference finals good. I think they might have had one conference finals. But, like, again, they you got to make it to the final. you got to be in the dance. The Sharks were in the dance. It's weird. They made it that one time, didn't even win, and everyone sort of left them alone. Which is more of a disappointment? St. Louis losing this or the Sharks losing this? Hmm. The Sharks. Why do you say that? The Blues season is sort of house money a little bit. Dude, we were last place on January 3rd. Isn't that hilarious? Um, I don't think the players would quite look at it that way. um, Because remember I was saying, I was ranting and raving about the Blues. I said they had the best offseason of any team. Mm -hmm. I thought they were uh, the cup favorite Mm -hmm. heading into the season. I think even ahead of the Sharks. Can't remember exactly what I said, but that might have been it. Um, they loaded up. They just looked like a really good squad. Was a little concerned about their goaltending. Definitely didn't count on Jordan Bennington coming in and stealing the whole thing. Uh, the Sharks loaded the hell up. Mm-hmm. And this was the plan. And, you know, you talk about load management with Eric Carlson. I bet he could have played a little bit more down the stretch. But they rested him. Yeah, which is the right thing to do. Dude, we're in the Pacific. Who cares? <laughs> Don't worry about it. We're going to... listen. We're going to make the playoffs no matter what. We're going to play a difficult team no matter what. So this whole going for home ice advantage thing, whatever. Let's not lose sleep over that. I'm sure the refs will they'll give us a break in Game 7 anyway. That's what they thought. That's what they thought for sure. They thought the Mike Hoffman trade and all that was funny. <laughs> so, so the refs just gave him, ah, that was hilarious. Here you go. A five-star rating on Uber. That's what that was. Just for that. <laughs> Um, I feel like the Sharks have, who's the gray beard on St. Louis? Who's the guy where everyone's like, ah, finally, I hope they do it. People have half-heartedly been like, oh, Jay Bowmeister? Like, they don't even mean it when they say it. They feel silly. Ah, Jay Bowmeister? What? Who cares? The Sharks have loaded the hell up and they got friggin' Joe Thornton, dude. 
Joe Thornton. Probably more than any other player in the league. Let's get this damn guy a cup. There's also Henrik Lundqvist, but everyone's like, ah, Rangers. I don't think that's happening yeah. anytime soon. <laughs> There's another guy who they sort of left alone because he made the final. You know who would be, uh, be great in Edmonton? Henrik Lundqvist. I mean, he probably disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, continue. <laughs> he probably says Lundquist no. Up. <laughs> yeah, what? You know what? Lundqvist for Lucic, straight up. Who says there no? Is. Who says no? There it is. <laughs> found Some it. people. I found it. Maybe a few. Um, <laughs> no, I think I think it's definitely more of a heartbreak for the Sharks. Okay. Because mm-hmm. the Blues, I think, they came in, A, we've done a good job. Um, We had a really shitty start to the season. It got better. We'll see where this goes. Dude, they fired their coach this year. Yeah. yeah. Which is supposed to be a winning formula, apparently. Um, the Sharks came into the season chomping at the bit, thinking they were going to win a cup. Who was the coach they fired? Was it, was it Mike Yo? Yes, Mike Yo. And now he's the assistant in Philly? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Mike Boy, Yo we, we didn't with really Michelle Therrien. And 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 tri- triumvirate of terrible, that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, oh the Philly God. coaching situation. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we can talk about that in a bit. We should have talked about that. I, I remember I thought we did. did. Did we? I don't know. I don't because there know. was the Jeff O'Neill quote where he, because, oh yeah, so we, we related it to the Leafs. Because DJ Smith is supposed to be the good guy, buffer, right between Babcock God, and, I can't even remember. and the players. And <laughs> freaking, so the good guy buffer between Alain Vigneault and the players is Michelle Therrien. Oof. It's okay. Chuck Fletcher up top, Oof. Vigneault, and then Therrien it's, it's and Steve's you. favorite people. It's unbelievable. Oh. Chuck Fletcher, <laughs> Therrien, uh, Mike Yo. I like Alain Vigneault, but apparently, because everywhere he goes, he wins. Like, I don't. I sure. mean, really, New York and Vancouver, pretty good last 10 it, years. Everywhere he goes, he almost wins. Here's a name True. you might remember. Ian LaPerriere, also a coach there. Lappy. Lappy. They like him. He is, was the guy, he, he blocked guy? the shot with his face. Did he? I don't know. He did. Mm. Yeah. Go look up his face. <laughs> Type in Ian LaPerriere face. I bet it's the first <laughs> thing that comes up. <laughs> Ian LaPerriere face. Face. So, um, kids playing at home, it is a very fun game. Oh! His face is broken. Wow. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> um, Patrick Watt of the Sens. Oh, yeah. So, the Please. rumor is the rumor is that Patrick Watt will be interviewed by the Ottawa Senators at some point this week, probably today, mm-hmm. um, about the head coaching position. Now, Patrick Watt is interesting because Patrick Watt hates young players. <laughs> And most people. And most people. And just humans. Like, yeah. <laughs> Patrick Waugh is a disagreeable character. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and resigned in Colorado because he hated what was going on. And, you know, at the time, I would have told you he had a point because it looked pretty rough there for about 18 months. Oh, and, then, got... and then the Duchesne trade happened and everything kind of turned on its head. I got grilled for my... Uh, I had a tweet a couple years ago. I, I go... Joe Sackick really ought to be fired. Look at this nonsense. And I just linked to the Avalanche Cat Friendly page. Okay. Oops. <laughs> well, it's better now. It's a little bit. It was yeah. it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> um and, and and Joe Sackick was a part of why it was bad. So let's let's call it what it is. He turned it around, but wow, it didn't start well. Now The uh, Sens turned it around. The Sens turned yeah, the Sens being as <laughs> For bad Colorado. as Colorado. That's true. Um I look at the, the Patrick Watt situation and go, is the reason They'd be looking at this guy for head coach. Like if they if they hired him, because instantly as soon as his name's associated with anything, it's fireworks, right? Oh, down goes Brown was like, Oh, I don't ask for much, but please. <laughs> is, please. is the reason that Patrick Waugh might be the right fit there for them because he could tell Eugene to F off and Eugene might listen? Huh. Your head coach should not be the one telling the owner to F off. Okay. Yes. In any case. But is his it's F the off power? Ottawa? No. It's the Ottawa Senators. So it doesn't matter whether it should be done right. You know that it won't be. Oh. So given the dysfunction, it's almost like, can you fight fire with fire? Dysfunctional coach, dysfunctional owner. And they're they're hiring a coach who's not afraid to quit. He'll just quit. Because he doesn't need the money. Yeah. He, <laughs> if he doesn't like what's going on, he'll just quit. He'll pull a Magic Johnson. <laughs> yeah. He did it before. Yeah. <laughs> he just no. Nope, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be there. <laughs> I, I love that. Clip. I wonder if they they, they look that at clip. that and they go because what other coach is gonna go in there and be able to tell Eugene Melnick what? I mean, but a, the head coach Dorian shouldn't man. have to go to the owner and shouldn't be like, "Hey, I'm not gonna but play." You know that they will. Oh. You know that they will. It's Ottawa. They have. It's to. ridiculous. It is. Well, and beyond beyond the f off part, 
We're forgetting that Patrick Waugh was not a good coach <laughs> when he was with the Colorado Avalanche. He was a young, angry Randy Carlisle. Like, uh, they got outshot every friggin' game, and they found ways to win because he motivated them. And remember when he shoved down the boards? Bruce Boudreaux, take that shit there, Bruce. Shoved it down, and he got a fine in his first game, and it was worth every penny because they finished third in the league in the regular season and then got bounced in the first round <laughs> by the Minnesota Wild, who now Bruce Boudreaux was the coach of. Um, yeah, now I'm a Minnesota Wild fan. Did you know that? Um... I don't think it's great. I don't know if he's a great strategic option for that team. He might be a stepping stone coach. So he just establishes a culture where everyone's just afraid to screw up. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if that's good. But he sort of whips <laughs> them into shape with no expectation of them being good while he's coach. So it could be that. He tells Eugene to F.O., <laughs> which is a big strength. And also one thing um, Pierre Lebrun brought up at a Puck Talks once that I thought was a really interesting point and doesn't get talked about enough. A huge error that the Senators made, uh, especially early on, like in the early 90s, whenever they came into not the Not reaching league, out to the French-Canadian audience? Not reaching out to the French-Canadian mm. audience. And there isn't a person in Quebec who doesn't know who Patrick Wise. You know what? You know? Patrick Wall might be the perfect head coach for the Ottawa I Senators. He, I think he actually is. I I am all aboard this now, train. I don't love his record with young players. No, but who cares? <laughs> no. Well, like in I the same don't. way, Montreal. It's it for Montreal. It's so important that they have a head coach who can speak French. Mm -hmm. It. I mean, we've talked about that. I sort of. Like, listen, if there's a good candidate no, available, no. The hire issue them. With, the issue with Montreal is that it's not that the coach can speak French; it's that they are French Canadian. That's what the well, issue's been. It's, yeah. it's usually and Well, people both. can take French lessons. P.K. Subban... Hard to pick up a language. P.K. Subban picked it up. No, you can, you can learn a language. You can pick it yeah. up. He's not fluent. Especially when you're spending up. half a year there. You can pick it up. Mm -hmm. Dude, Maybe. you can pick it up. Yeah. And you may not be perfect at it, but the problem with Montreal is that they were like, no, we will only hire from this province. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a, that was a bit of a problem. But I, if you're going to... I don't know. I we criticized it for them, I guess, because it's because it's what they always do. But I don't know. I when you're the Sens, I feel like their options are so limited. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go there right now? I'm shocked Patrick Waugh wants to go there. That was my first thought. It wasn't. This is stupid. Why would they do this? It was. Why would he? Like, for a guy who quit because he didn't need the headache, he's gonna join the Sens. I think the reason he quit. I think the reason that he would do it is because nobody's called him. Yeah. Uh, he quit. And he wants to get back in the game. He quit. Mm -hmm. He thought he would get mountains of offers. Yeah. Nobody called. So if you're if you're Patrick Waugh, there's two outcomes. You do poorly where it was going to go poorly anyway. But it's not really your fault because Eugene's... It's exactly. not really your fault. You get called or you don't afterwards. Probably not. But you're Patrick Waugh. It doesn't matter. You could probably go back to the queue if you still You still really don't get wanted. it pinned on you. Yeah. 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 You could probably go back to the really queue if you really want it. Um, or the Sens overachieve. Which, and you look like a genius. With if hockey, they will, how could they and, not? Yeah. You, okay, finish up outside of the top five. Or, sorry, outside of the bottom five. They've overachieved. <laughs> and Craig, they could do that with Craig Anderson. Sure. Ooh. They can do that. Well, he does alternate good years and bad. I'm also a fan of the John Tortorella effect of being a loud coach and that you're distracting from your team. Mm -hmm. I think for this team, if they're going to be so bad, it's kind of important for the players to have a coach that will distract from the team being bad. And if the media huh? focus becomes on Patrick Waugh, there's an ease on the players because like, hey, we're not answering questions every night about our performance. Patrick Waugh is kind of distracting everybody by being a loudmouth. Not just the players. The the, the players, the GM, GM. the yeah. owner. The He's a lightning rod. Exactly. You're 100% right. And again, while the while the analytics of the avalanche in Waugh's first year were frigging awful, I don't know. There's this uh, there's this energy that, and it fades. There's there's a time limit on it. It's, mm -hmm. it's the Brian Burke time limit. Yeah, about it, four years. It, it doesn't let well on Tortorella most times. Sure, Tortorella. Tortorella. Well, he might have yeah. finally and figured it if out. If Patrick Watt goes there in Ottawa and he's the distraction for the entire season, it's good. Players can grow. Maybe they they don't have to answer these questions. It'll be good. And for this show, 
It is the most <laughs> fun <laughs> option. Oh, Easily. Yeah. The, well, well now, we got it. How does this affect the podcast? What What makes me sad is, is that Ed- Edmonton seems to be turning it around. So now, <laughs> now we're going to have to, like, what? We'll only have the Senators. I wonder how Edmonton's going to turn it around this time. Edmonton does not. Ah. ah. Well, well, nevertheless. nevertheless. Yeah. You never know. I actually, Sens, uh, Oilers, I Stanley Cup Final. Patrick Waugh and DJ Smith are the coaches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Leon Dreisaitl with his bad contract, Consmith. That I called a bad contract once. No, it should be Lucic with the uh, Consmith. Mm, yes, zero points. <laughs> just character. <laughs> he charactered his way to the cup. NHL by Maddie's there, and he just carries Keith Gretzky in. Oh, on a, on a, on <laughs> over a, his head. Over his head. And, and we, we, like, you know, like, no, you just clone a bunch of NHL by Maddie's, and you know like how they carry the Egyptian pharaoh around? <laughs> yes. They just pharaoh him in on... Uh, <laughs> You mean there will be a chorus of NHL Maddie's? Yeah, oh! <laughs> when can we do NHL by Maddie's tweets? Because I have a couple. Oh. How are there any? <laughs> I don't they know haven't he, done anything. What's he tweeting? What is he tweeting about? Who he's tweeting? How are there any? What does he think about Great Britain beating France? So this is. This what is, is he tweeting about? This is the best thing I saw all weekend. No, it's not. NHL by Maddie. NHL by Maddie. Maddie. Jim Matheson tweeted. Why are Blues trying to score into empty net when nobody's pressuring you? What, which, <laughs> <laughs> why grammar? Man? No. Why score why speak a goal? word? <laughs> so I'll do it the correct g- grammar. Okay. Why are the Blues trying to score into the empty net when nobody's pressuring them? Now, did this tweet <laughs> did this tweet come from like they needlessly iced the puck and it cost them? No, they were trying. No, the Blues won. They were the blue. The Blues won the game, and the Sharks pulled their goalie. And then the Blues were trying to score on the empty net, even though the Sharks weren't like trying to get the puck from them because yeah. they just kind of had a clear break because they had. Does it? Did it result so, in icing though? I don't know if this particular instance they scored on the exact shot or whatever know. that Jim Mathis is talking about, but he was questioning why the St. Louis Blues were trying to score on an empty net. Why would they try to score? See, one of the tweets, the first reply is, because goals count in hockey, Jim. <laughs> and I think that's the most appropriate response. People are mean. <laughs> that's a mean thing to say to NHL by Matt. Don't the second, blow this for us. The second response was, usually scoring more goals than the other team is a good strategy. <laughs> no. So I want to hear why it's not. Another response, just a guess here, but to extend the lead to avoid Sharks tying it up. Mm. <laughs> it, no, it's about There's respect a... for the game. <laughs> it's about respect. Maddie, Maddie's right. Him and him and Don Cherry should go speak in a tunnel at each other. Just a big old chamber of respect. The game used to be like this. Uh, Keith Gretzky. I love. The, yeah, actually, here, Jesse. Did you see the follow-up tweet? Keith Gretzky would have never tried to score <laughs> into an empty net when there was nobody pressuring Keith Gretzky him. Gretzky did make it to the NHL, didn't he? Or was that Brent? That was Brent. Okay. Keith didn't make it. Okay. Okay. Um, Jesse, or Jesse, do we have any others? No, that was your only one oh, that was for man. today. I was hoping. I was hoping. <laughs> uh, so um, the top 25 UFAs for this season uh, have been released by The Athletic. Now, a lot of these are going to change because a lot of them will we sign. Like, it's just the way the NHL works. Yes. A lot of re-signing going we on. We sign? But we're, we sign, but we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through them because I think it'll be fun. All twenty five, just twenty. Also, there's nothing else. So. Yeah, they're, honestly, it's it's awful thin. We're just because the Bruins swept so quickly. It's like, what do you talk about now? You sort of talk about the draft if your team's been out for a while, mm-hmm. um, and you talk about the Stanley Cup final that hasn't been set up yet. The combine's not for a week. Yeah, like there isn't there isn't that meaty bit of content. It, the that you're World like, Hockey oh. Championship. Yeah, which we'll get to. Yeah. I have a little piece from that, which I think you'll you'll like if you didn't see it. I won't. Uh, Artemi Panarin <laughs> uh, is the top of the athletics UFA class of 2019. Hard for him not to be. Do you think he stays or goes? Oh, goes. You think he goes? No, he's, he's not staying with the Blue Jackets. So, Florida? I think so. It seems written in stone, doesn't it? Yeah, well, with Quinville there. Yeah. Whatever they're paying Quinville was worth it. Yes. <laughs> Eric Carlson, we talked about. Matt Duchesne's an interesting one with Columbus. Because it seems like Matt Duchesne doesn't mind. Um, like Matt Duchesne's not one of those guys that's like, I need to be in the spotlight in, in like a major market. And and I don't mean yeah. to, I'm not trying to downgrade Columbus, but it's not New York. 
Um, and you would think New York would be a destination that would be very interested in Matt Duchesne. He they wants to win like so hard that it cost him winning. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want? I wonder if Matt Duchesne in Columbus makes a ton of sense. And not only do they have the cap room to do it, but it may be the thing that floats them for the next couple of years while they're, you know, rebuilding their draft picks. I I still think they'll be fine. They're going to have to be active in free agency mm-hmm. for sure. Um, but yeah, like you said, there's not much to trade with unless you're trading players uh, and prospects, which I don't know is the greatest idea. Um, I still think there's also a little bit of Duchesne voodoo out there. You know, with the people are people are turned off by him still. Yeah, um, which makes him cheaper though. Mm-hmm. Fewer suitors, um, cost you less money to keep him. So I think it'll be attractive for uh, Columbus to keep him, and if they liked him, uh, you know, that's obviously a big bonus. And it looked like Duchesne had a really good time there. The, I mean, right now, the team that feels like they've they did the best in the playoffs. To some people, because the Stanley Cup hasn't been awarded yet, still feels like the Blue Jackets. <laughs> or Carolina. Yeah. Or Carolina. Because the Blue Jackets beat the Lightning. And everyone was like, what? And that happened, that happened like a month ago. Interestingly, they both had the same... Sorry, no, that's incorrect. So I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> oh, okay. all right. Uh, no, okay. incorrect. Well, nope. Different team. Um, Bobrovsky's at number four. We sort of have hit, uh, have hit that ad nauseum. Jeff Skinner in Buffalo is interesting, though. I, for the longest time, was saying I think he's going to stay and Sabres fans should chill. I do not think he's going to stay, and maybe you should not chill. What makes you think that? Uh, because why on earth would anyone... Is it because of the mess that is the Buffalo, Buffalo Sabres? Yeah. yeah. Although Ralph Kruger was a decent signing. As it a seemed coach? like as, as coach. Yeah. Well, That could be interesting. I, I've Ralph Kruger is interesting just in general because it seems like he's a... It seems like he's not necessarily an X's and O's guy. He's mm-hmm. a personality guy. Uh, but also, he has a little bit of that Oilers voodoo. Right. And and he didn't mind. He went to Europe. Man. He was he, in soccer, wasn't he? I think so. He was also the head coach of Team Europe at the World Cup. Oh. Really? Wow. Yes. yes that was. official team. That official team that was definitely <laughs> official and made of a country. Only one. <laughs> Teams, and it wasn't even Europe. It was some of Europe. Teams, some of Europe. <laughs> oh, still makes me sick. I was, oh, I just remember being at those, uh, not the gold medal game, the two out of three gold medal game, the first one. Mm-hmm. Freaking By the way, goofy format. All those countries that are, the world map's interesting, right? Because... All those countries that are former Warsaw Pact countries, like Soviet Union countries, so you're... you're oh, here Adam goes. You're, Let's go. Uh, Let's go down this no, path. No, like, we're, we're, like your Latvia's... Latvia is, is like, on the border. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, you look at Estonia. You look at Slovakia. Mm. Uh, you look at some of those areas, and they are really... Like, I don't... Where do you decide that Asia starts and Europe ends? And people look at Russia like it's European. It's not. It's, it's very, half Asian. Yeah. 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 It's it, like, it's, how does that, I've, I've always been curious about that. How do we make that distinction? Was it because Russia had a Euros, Eurocentric sort of view at one point and Moscow is closer to Europe than it is to the other side? I mean, like, it's, it's sort of weird, right? Like, it's, okay. It's a weird situation. That's why the, even the sum of Europe team, it's like Europe and a little Asia too. I had this argument with Andre years ago for the joining the Russia videos. Asia and Europe, mm-hmm. different continents. Apparently, yeah. No, but that's how I they're was, classified. That's, that's what I was taught. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but when you think about it, no, that's ridiculous. They're the same landmass. Yeah, the same landmass. It's sure. Eurasia is the continent, and that's what he argued because I guess that's what he learned. Sure. And people even make the distinction if when you go south is like the Middle East. The Middle East is Asia. Mm-hmm. Yes. But it's like it's no, but it's kind of the Middle East and this cluster of countries. Yes. Right. You know, it's different. It's different. But and then this culturally is different. different. And then, culturally different, for yeah. sure. But, and then, and then Europe, should we, but should there's we, Scandinavia. Yeah. So right. are you making the distinctions by culture? Because then there's just a whole bunch of distinctions. Yes. This, you is, gotta, the, this is the weird thing. And we got the Eurocentric view, obviously, in school. Because yeah. it was always, well, no, there's us and then there's them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But really, in all in, in, in honesty, the reason that the, that worked out that way is, is the geographical factors in Europe were very different than what they were in Asia. Yeah. How we get here? I'm asking how we can call Team Europe 
Team Sum of Europe when I think it clearly there's a, there's clearly a, a, a line there that I'm missing. As ridiculous as it was to call them Team Europe, mm-hmm. it would have been okay. Team Sum of Europe, it would have been more ridiculous to call them Team Sum of World. <laughs> team World. But it wasn't Team World because there were other countries in the team world, world. And they age. called it Team Canada even though anybody 23 <laughs> and other wasn't allowed to play for Team Canada. Yes, team Sum of Canada. It doesn't make sense. Team Sum of Europe. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Also, if you weren't from any of the countries, you could still play for Team Europe, I guess, right? Like, say... I don't even remember. Like, if Maybe you're from... Germany. If you're... If, if, Germany, there was no... Could. Yeah. Germany, you could. Sweden, That's, you could not. Right. Sweden no, had a Sweden had a team. team. Sweden had a team. Right. Okay, well, okay let's let's say, let's say let's say you're from player. Mexico. Let's say you're from Mexico. Yes. Where do you play? And you're above They would have had to change the team name. And you and then you do you get to play on Team Europe or do you just not get to play? I think that's the better option. Rather than change the team <laughs> name, you just have a Mexican player play for Team Europe in the same way that Australia is in Eurovision. Like, yeah. Just because <laughs> it, cause it doesn't matter. But just we want you in this. Ignore it. Yeah. It's fine. Australia won Eurovision. It's the best. <laughs> I love it. The the countries in that tournament, I believe, were the Czech Republic, Slovakia, uh, Sweden, Finland, Russia. Now here's where I'm going to lose some of you. Team Sum of Europe. <laughs> Team Sum of Canada. Yeah. Team Sum of USA. And Funzies McCool jerseys. <laughs> 23 and unders. W- who From North cheering? America only. Yes. The rest of the countries were allowed to have 23 and unders. Sorry. Is North it, was it 23 America or 23? Funzies McCool jerseys. Was it 22 or 23? 23 and under. Okay. Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we McCool, get was it McKinnon on that team too? He was. He scored Good. that friggin' ridiculous Out- goal on Lundqvist. Just, Matthews Out- played in that before he was an NHL player. Yeah. On McDavid's wing. <laughs> on McDavid's wing. Here's how ridiculous <laughs> that tournament was. There's a great clip uh, when McKinnon scores that redonkulous overtime winner on Lundqvist. Ry- Morgan Riley's mic'd up because mm-hmm. he was on team some of Funzie's Mc- cool jerseys, yep. North America. He was mic'd up and he goes ballistic and he like he just makes all kinds of screeching noises that you never knew he could possibly make and the celebration was so raucous because the team thought they were through to the next round not realizing that no they were not it would still depended on yeah oh, wow a certain yeah and so they just didn't make it so which was really good for the tournament because nobody watched the yeah championship team game. some of McFunzie's jerseys who everyone was cheering for was eliminated by winning in overtime. <laughs> wah, wah, and then wah. the and then the championship final was best two out of three. Yes! <laughs> but the second game went to overtime, and everyone was like, oh, it was compelling. No, the second game didn't go to overtime. Marshan scored a shorthanded goal with... Uh, oh, it was like a couple... It was like a minute remaining. Yeah, yeah. It came down to the end. And so... They were like, oh, Toronto it was close! Had to celebrate for Marshan. <laughs> yeah, hey, it was close! So anyway, yeah, R- Ralph Kruger's a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Skinner, uh, uh, according to um, this this article anyway, uh, and it's by Craig Custance if you want to check it out, um, apparently Jeff Skinner and the Sabres have not had any significant talks. Oh. Not good. Joel Pavelski is a free agent. He's staying. Yeah, he's staying? Yeah. Okay. Anders Lee, New York Islanders. Wouldn't it be sort of funny Oh. If the captain of the New York Islanders signed somewhere else. Just the best. No, I don't think he's going to. Um, one, he saw firsthand what happens there uh, when that happens. Also, um, in the same way that I don't see Pavelski ever abandoning the Sharks, mm-hmm. um, for different reasons, I see Anders Lee staying an Islander. One, because they have the space. Two, because Lou. Uh, three, because he became part. He became the leader of the NHL's FU squad. Oh, you think we suck. And I'm the captain of the team that you think sucks. I'll show you. You might even think I'm captain because the team sucks. But what if Columbus comes in and says, yeah, well, we'll pay you more. It'll be interesting. I also... That's a guy I think would be a great fit in Columbus. Well, you know, you know what's not good? You know what's not fun? Getting plastic snakes thrown at you. You know what's less fun? Getting kneecapped by one of Lou Lamorello's goons. <laughs> Allegedly. I mean, a maybe. In theory. We'll see. In a dream I had. Jake Gardner. Oh. Now, 
they're saying in this article that he's a $6 million player, which I can see. It might even be more. Puts up a lot of points, man. I, I yeah. It depends. To, my, my question with him, if he hadn't had that back injury at the end of the season, I would be, if I would, I'd be like, Leafs have to find a way to keep him. But because of that back injury and because of Jake Muzzin playing the way he did, part of me thinks, yes, yes, 100% you're going to miss Jake Gardner. But yes, 100%, you thought you were going to lose him anyway. And you have to look at a guy like that and think, uh, if that back injury is that bad, and they said it was Zach Parise bad. Well, and he's not getting surgery, right? Right. Until the contract signs. Ooh. I would think. So, Which means you know so he, he's going to miss a decent chunk of next season. Or, or he doesn't do that, and he plays, and plays less good, and then gets the surgery, which right. is what NHL players do. Right. And makes it worse. And that's that's the thing. Like I, Unfortunately for Jake, this has just happened. However, he will get the money. I just hope whatever team he signs with goes, just get your surgery done, and we got you for a lot of years, so we'll just worry about it later. But the, the first 40 games of the season are so important. It's I, so hard. I just sort of look at the Leafs and I go, listen, they, no matter how healthy or banged up he is, they can't afford him anyway. I, th- I, think, I think they're going to try. I think they'll make an offer mm-hmm. for sure. Um, I just don't think they can afford him. And I think uh, they won't have to. Um, listen, the Leafs uh, to start next season I think are going to be in tough. Um, just because Zach Hyman, who played on the top line, he won't be there. Travis Dermott, who played in the top six, won't be there. Um, who knows? It could be a huge opportunity for someone. Mm-hmm. No Maybe question. even Erasmus Sandin. Erasmus Sandin's the future, right? Mm-hmm. On the left side there. And Morgan Riley's already built in there. You know you have at least a year of Jake Muzzin. I just don't see how Gardner fits. Matt Zuccarello in Dallas apparently was has been a great fit. They love him. Yeah. But if they re-sign him, they got to send their 2020 first rounder to the Rangers. Oh. So what do you do? And they didn't make the playoffs by a ton. No. But and he was quite good for them. Is it lottery when he was protected? Playing, it was about three seconds that he was playing. I, I, don't, check. I don't protected. believe it is. It doesn't say that. But uh, man, for <laughs> that reason alone, I don't care how good of a fit he is. You can't sign him. You cannot commit to sending your first round pick over a year ahead of time. You got to be in a special circumstance. And to they're do not. That. The Sharks were. The Sharks were in a special circumstance. Although with, I think that pick was a lot of protected. With a far more special player, let's be honest. Yes. Eric Carlson is, what, top two when he's healthy? Top I, top D, man? I think the Stars with Zuccarello make the playoffs. Yeah. But Don't the get Sharks, me wrong. The Sharks make the playoffs without Carlson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's if your not season changes on Matt Zuccarello... It's not the same, is it? It's, it's not, not the, the same. same. And Matt Zuccarello would tell you that. He is not... An elite player like Carlson is. When we talk about elite, we talk very about top good. three. He's very good. Yes. He's not elite. He is... Yeah. It's just... Yeah. It's not the same. It's not the same. And also, and then it becomes more expensive because now you're committed. So, I don't know. Do you go into free agency and go get more? You, you probably should. You probably should have a few insurance policies. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden you're mortgaging more of the cap, more of the future. Ah, man, there's other good wingers out there, dude. Go out and get one that's not going to cost you a first round. So pick. the initial trade is a second and a third round pick for Matt Zuccarello, which seems cheap. For which the, is like, yeah, that's for, great for the value he provided. Ignoring the injury, great trade. And then the conditions on the pick were: if the second round pick becomes a first round pick if Dallas advances to the third round of the playoffs and Zuccarello plays in 50% of the game. So that condition was not met. Right. Yeah. So close. It, it stayed a second. Oof. And then the 2023rd becomes a first, which is crazy. If Dallas. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. So the condition, the deal is a 2019 second and a 2023rd. The 2023rd jumps to a first round pick unprotected. If they re-sign Zuccarello. Ooh. Are you serious? Yeah. So wait, Zuccarello could have been two firsts? Yes. <laughs> Buddy, Jimmy Altieri is doing work with the Rangers. You know what's funny? I forget his real name. 
What's what's their GM's name? No idea. He looks like Jimmy Altieri from The Sopranos. Um, Gorton, isn't it Jeff Gorton? Yes, yes. <laughs> I just I keep like, picturing Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy because, the Rat. Also because it's not Jeff, Jeff Gordon, Gordon, it's Jeff Gordon. Gordon. Gorton. 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 <laughs> Man, that's Gorton. a uh, really crafty bit of negotiating there. But if you're Dallas and you're like, ah, I don't care, I'm not going to resign him anyways. Well, yeah, also, uh, it's, it's like the Ducks, the Ducks gave up a ridiculous amount for mm. Chris Pronger. But all the conditions were, well... If you win, you won't care. Right. To which they said, yeah, sure, fine. Mm -hmm. And then the Oilers squandered it anyway. (laughs) So who cares? Tyler Myers, Winnipeg Jets. Right-handed shot D. Mm -hmm. Numbers. Giant. Giant. Numbers are not fantastic. No, he's not a. But they still uh, see him as a Jake Gardner $6 million. He's a right-handed shot defenseman, though, Mm -hmm. which probably pumps his numbers up. The Jets have a choice to make here. It's Truba or it's Myers, basically. Well, and, and I'd go asset, for the guy who never requested a trade. <laughs> from an asset management perspective, it makes sense that Winnipeg resigns him and trades Truba, too. Probably. Because Truba doesn't want to stay. Right. Myers probably likes it there. And you're able to take Jacob Truba and flip him for some pretty significant assets. What's interesting about both of those guys is they both have... They both have these outsized reputations for what they are. Their fancies aren't good. But I was just going to say, but yeah. also they they got big question marks. Yeah, for neither of them, neither of them has good uh, analytics and haven't for like quite some time. So of the two, like I, I look at Truba and the Leafs as like there's a trading partner there potentially. You put him with Morgan Riley, he's probably going to have good numbers because Ron Hainsey did. Yeah, and like he could be a good fit despite his blemishes. Dude, move the puck. Move the puck. And that was the problem on the right side. It wasn't just that they weren't great defenders. It, dude, they couldn't move the freaking puck, which is true. What the can team needs. Yes. Myers can do that. Yeah. Like, I looked at the Leafs' uh, composition, and I go, they're ridiculous up the right wing. Um, and they're weak on the left. Would it have made it easier if you had a right-shot defenseman who could actually move the puck, who was sending these wicked Jake Gardner-esque passes? Sure. Up to the left. Maybe if they stop the using the stretch pass so much too, that'd be good. You know, could be that. Could be maybe throwing the throwing a hail mary every time isn't great when you're not Eric Carlson. Whatever says Kasperi Kapanen. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it could be a good fit for Toronto, but I hope they don't give up the sun and the moon for him because I don't think he's worth the sun and the moon. Does Kasperi Kapanen for Jacob Truba maybe and add assets in? Does that make sense to you? Uh, I. And I'm not saying it's a one for one, so everybody chill. It, no. it seems like the Jets, according to Friedman in his last third one thoughts, they'll want some sort of cover. Like they'll want a defenseman back when they deal Truba. How the hell are they going to get that? This is the problem with a lot of Leaf trades. Yeah, so they'll need something to cover Myers and Truba leaving. So when they trade Truba, it'll be a defenseman. But who in return. would do that? Why would you trade for him? Unless the Leafs send Muzzin their way. Unless no. they're moving another piece, like a forward, like one of their big forwards, like and then they get a defenseman back that way, and then move Truba and let Te- let Myers walk because they can't match it. It's interesting because sometimes there's these little trades that happen where, again, it's interesting that Dubas has been working the phones for years, but it was always as an assistant GM. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, you know, might still be building relationships. And that little dinky peril in home for Nick Patan trade, you go, well, what even was that? <laughs> because, like, Babcock clearly doesn't like Patan. I, I'm not convinced he's even going to play regularly next year. But maybe part of it is, all right, we establish a relationship. We establish a bit of a rapport. So maybe it's for a move down the line. Maybe even in those initial talks it was discussed. I don't know. It's an interesting thought. I There was a debate I saw. That uh, it was basically who would you rather move on from, Janssen or Kapanen? And I can't remember who it was, but they said, I think it might be better to sell high on Janssen. And mm. I, I don't know, man. He seems like a more complete player to me. I, I, I think they, no, they're both talented players with blemishes. Sure. And I just see Kapanen's, what makes Kapanen special. Is more special than what makes Janssen special? Unfortunately. Interesting. Okay. Maybe you trade the more special player for another piece That's to fill a different hole, and say. then you accept the less special player for cheaper money, and it won't affect your overall team. But if I'm trading my more special player, it better be for more than Jacob Truba. I'm not sweetening the pot.
And I and I think that might be the perception. Well, you take the more established player, and then the Leafs trade this guy, and you sweeten the pot. No, thank you. No, thank you. Then you continue down the road. You've always continued, which is not having a right-handed shot defenseman in the lineup. Which is unacceptable. Or you just call another damn team. They can't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I yeah. just don't get this whole this whole. They have to have another defenseman for Jacob Trouba. Like, who's doing that? Like you look at not the Leafs. You look at the most recent one for one for major star power on the back end. It's the Seth Jones uh, Ryan Johansson thing. Both yes. teams had needs and they mm-hmm. were different. But if Winnipeg has a need at that position, trading trading Jacob Truba just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get another right shot defenseman for Jacob Truba because why would the trading team give up on him unless they hate their own guy and you hate yours and you want to get rid of him? It doesn't make sense. Unless you're unless you go in like a roundabout way and you trade some sort of forward sure. and then you Three trade way maybe. Yeah, yeah. I thought the Jets had an up and coming uh, defenseman too. I'm sure they do. Who, who's Sammy? Is Sammy Niku? N I K U? Is he left or righty? <coughs> I can't remember. N I K U. I don't see him on the count. Anyway, mm. he is a right shot defenseman. Sorry, took a little bit. Brock Nelson, another guy who's a good support piece, put up a career high fifty three points this year. So you got to think he's going to uh, regress to whatever he'll be. Good support piece, career high, UFA. Strikes me as someone's going to play Brock, pay Brock Nelson way too much money. Yeah, there's a, there's a recipe right there. Robin Leonard, next on the list. Probably another guy that I might say, ah. He's going to stay. You think he's going to stay in the island? He, he will stay in Long Island. Um, you know what? I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think when a team takes a chance on you, mm-hmm. when it sounds like very few were willing to do that, and it pays off big time, and you you're in a better, you're in the best place you've ever been at your life, in your life, professionally, mentally. I think it would be wise for him to stay, okay. and also wise for the Islanders to keep him. Hopefully, you know you're not going into Bobrovsky. I need ten million dollars territory. They might. I don't think so. Jordan Eberle is next on the list. I don't think Leonard's a typical person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think he'd be willing to sign for less just because. You know what? I'm happy here. Jordan Eberle. The Islanders like him. They want to get a contract done. It's very interesting because Jordan Eberle, when he was signed to that $6 million deal, mm-hmm. $6 million per year, it seemed like maybe a little bit much. And I think for the duration of his contract, maybe it was a little bit much. Then he had a pretty good season. And he's heading into unrestricted free agency, and I'm like, who's going to pay him less than six million dollars for mm-hmm. the numbers that he was able to put up? I could see him saying in in New York. I see. I I what they did was special, right? Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of guys would be willing to stay in that. They they want to be they want to continue to be part of what they built, sort of thing. And they traded for you mm-hmm. after the Oilers basically told you different NFL, GM, but yeah, different GM, of course. It, it is a little different. Um, I just don't see him being in a hurry to move on. Yeah, I don't see him being in a hurry to move on, and I also don't see him being like wallet cripplingly expensive. Mm-hmm. So that's exactly why I think like a team like Columbus or Florida comes in and goes, "We have we have a lot of money, and you won't cost that much, and you'll give us twenty five, thirty goals." Columbus is interesting for sure. I'm trying to think of players he played with in junior, he didn't play for a great junior team. Next on the list is Gus Nyquist, 0.74 points per game, up from his career average of 0.61, which, again, you know, a guy that Detroit fell in love with, but was never going to be the guy that got them over the hump. He was never going to be a star. He sure looked like it. Did, in that first. First, that first little bit, and then not so much. Um, there is a, a note about this. Ken Holland, if he had remained the GM of Detroit, there was a possibility of him returning to the wings. That is Nyquist. Uh, but since Holland has moved on, it makes the move a little less likely. I wonder if there's a fit in Edmonton because, boy, is that not the most perfect guy to play with Connor McDavid. I, they need wingers. They need the most plentiful resource in the entire National Hockey League. And they'll be fine. Could be fine. Alexander Edler, Vancouver Canucks' most important defenseman. How do you bring him back? Or do you let him go at 33 years old? He's had one of his best seasons, but... It's, dude, it's... Uh, he wants a no-move clause. It's Bim Jenning, though. Yeah, it's Bim Jenning. He'll get it. He'll get it? He'll get it, yeah. Anton Strawman, Tampa Bay Lightning. I just... 
again, like we've talked about with Tampa, I in the same way that the Islanders built something special, and I just don't see players. There have been no discussions thus far, but How yeah. You, what I don't understand is if 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 there are players that are either either there or moving on, how do you not at least reach out to them and say, hey? We're going to, like the Leafs apparently reached out to Van Riemsdyk and said, listen, yeah. we love that your time here, but we are going to move on. We what do really you do all day? It. What do they do? <laughs> what do Why you do, do all day? Call the agent to say, hey, when do you want to schedule a meeting? Yeah. What do the agent call? Is golf that fun? No. Can't be that fun. Is golf, I'm, there's a lot of downtime all the times I've played golf. Kevin Hayes, Winnipeg Jets, 13 points in 20 games with the Jets uh, after leaving New York, but saw his ice time drop. Fast, kills penalties, hits. Lost in the first round. So it's a, it's a bit different. I think there'll be pressure for Shovel Day off to overpay for a guy like him, too, after the uh, Stastny thing with uh, with Vegas. Hmm. So there's an interesting factor But he wasn't for a you. great fit. No. Like, Stastny was a home run. He was a fantastic fit. Um, but I think Winnipeg, there's a little bit of the... Edmonton factor, mm-hmm. where even though Winnipeg is good, um, I think it's a little bit more difficult to get players to go there and stay there. Just, you know, where do you want to live? You want to live in, like, California or Florida or Winnipeg? <laughs> like, no no offense to Winnipeg. Or even Toronto. No one's here because of the weather. No. Um, nope. You know? So I think uh, I think there's a chance of him staying, but it'll be an overpayment. Michael Furland, Carolina Hurricanes. A lot of teams interested in him at the deadline. Apparently the Leafs were in. And he seemed to be the guy that everybody thought Wayne Simmons was. Yes, in some regard. Top in some scores, regard. goals, plays wing. Um, did you see the Instagram post? Uh, Michael Furland? Yes. No, I don't follow Michael Furland on Instagram. No, me neither. But I saw it linked on uh, Twitter. Here we go. Uh, here's his, his post. And he's one of those NHL players who just takes the Getty Images thing that says Getty Images on it and mm-hmm. posts it anyway. Um, Thanks for everything, Raleigh. Absolutely loved it here. Oh, so he's gone. He gone. <laughs> he gone. Um, it's not even. He's not even trying to hide it. No. He just begs. No, he gone. Uh, I don't think he's going to return to Carolina. I don't know where he goes. Someone is going to overpay for the wrong parts of him. What do they overpay for? The fact that he hits and he's mean and he hits and mean is what they're going to overpay for. But there's another guy who was pretty banged up, Mm -hmm. and his body's got hard miles on it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So he's probably going to get a big payday because he is... I liked what Kyle Dubas said about uh, Kadri. He, He has something that we don't have in abundance. And Furland has something that the league doesn't have in abundance. Which is, well, it's two things, really. He's a goal scorer, mm-hmm. and also he'll mess you up. So he's signing with the Leafs. It'd be interesting. Because that's what they need to get over Boston. Brendan Shanahan. Yeah, yeah. No, they can't Sh- afford him. Brendan Sh- Shanahan said in an interview with Tim and said that he said, you know, you can teach toughness. You can teach some of that. Not all of it. He's not, he's not talking about turning uh, Austin Matthews into a fighter. But Jerome McGinley didn't come into the league as a guy who would drop the gloves very much, and yet he turned into that guy um, a little bit from time to time. I wonder if the Leafs are looking next season to go, okay, guys, this is the next step. Because they can't teach the skill that those players have on the Leafs, right? They just don't. <laughs> First but, game of the season, someone just pops someone else for no good reason <laughs> other than to say, at least you're here to say, fuck you. Yeah, guess what the game <laughs> is? <laughs> um, you look at a guy like Brent Burns, sort of developed over a career. He's also uh, brolic. Like he's he's got that Neanderthal DNA mm-hmm. in him. Sure, like we're talking a story. That's, Although if you look at him without the beard, I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's like the James Harden James baby Harden, picture. Oh, James <laughs> Harden with the beard yeah. is crazy. It's. I wonder if uh, there's a story that stuck with me, and I think it came from Justin Bourne that he wrote it uh, from his time with the Marlies. And you know, after a loss or whatever, it's during a team meal. It's just quiet. And they sit there and it's quiet. And out of nowhere, Dubas just breaks the silence. And he yells over at Janssen. He goes, hey, Yanni, why can't you be Victor Arvidsson? And it was sort of, it was a, I guess, an awkward challenge, but also a compliment. Because he looks at Victor Arvidsson. I mean, if you look at him, if you look at his size, like he's a tiny guy. I don't think he weighs very much. He's not very tall. Uh, he's very fast. 
But like beyond that, I don't know if he has. I don't, I don't know if he's a particularly special player. So he basically looked at Janssen, and he goes, "Geez, this guy's got speed. He's got a nose for the net. He's got a little bit of tenacity." So he's looking at him. He goes, "Why can't you be Victor Arvidsson?" And I watched Janssen throughout these playoffs, and you know, I, I complimented him with Matthews, and I thought they worked well, and. I was talking about how Kapanen wasn't quite what worked on that line. But then I watched a few games of Victor Arvidsson. <laughs> and, like, again, it's unfair just because of this one anecdotal story of Dubas going, why can't you be, be Victor Arvidsson? He's definitely not there yet. Mm-hmm. And But what makes Victor Arvidsson Victor Arvidsson is he is a frigging pit bull. He's, he's got that Zach Hyman tenacity, but he can wheel. He's got both knees. <laughs> yeah, he can wheel and he's, and he's got better finish. So uh, in terms of can it be taught, I think it can. Do the Does the current group have it? Mm, I don't debatable. think so. I don't think so. I think they had more than I thought. Yeah. In the Bruins series. They lost to the Bruins, but it wasn't because of that. No, and it wasn't... It, yeah, you're, you're right. Nobody could say that they lost to the Bruins because of a grit factor. I think injuries played a bigger role than we, we let on. Um, you, if you have a healthy Jake Gardner, if you have a healthy Zach Hyman, you have a healthy Travis Dermott. I mean, those guys are all, all three of those guys have six month recovery surgeries yeah. to go through. And it's not like the Bruins were perfectly healthy no, either, but like, I'm sorry, I'm just speaking from the least perspective. Here. I just, I, to me, a healthy, like no offense to Zach Hyman, no offense to Travis Dermott. If Gardner's healthy, it, wash your hands of that series. Hmm. To me, you have a, you have a right, you have a left side, sorry, of... Riley, Muzzin, Gardner. It's really good. Or, even better, top four. You make one of them play right, and yeah, and then all of a sudden your top four is Riley, Muzzin, Gardner, and doesn't matter. Ryan Dezingel, Columbus Blue Jackets at number 19. Spent a lot of money this year. 26 goal guy. You think he spent a lot of money? 26 goal guy. Jesse, can you look up? uh, I want to know what Ryan Dezingel did in Columbus. Four goals. During the regular season. Yes. Do you get anything in the playoffs? That's a good question. I I'd be interested to know if you got anything in the playoffs. Because when you put him with uh, Matt Duchesne in Ottawa, there's, I, we've talked about this a thousand times, even on good teams, someone has to score. On I bad th- teams, someone has to score. Or sorry, even on bad teams, someone has to score. I think that's, a, I think that's garbage, but it can be true. And maybe that was the case. Dezingle has one goal, had one goal with Columbus in the playoffs. And four goals in how many games in the regular season? With Clavis? Yeah. Four goals in 21 games. He spent a lot of money. Hmm. Someone, hey, you know where that could be a great fit? If his value is low and no one's going to overpay, which he's a free agent, everyone's going to overpay. Man, Edmonton needs wingers. His time on ice was a was also extremely diminished. He went from 14 minutes, or went from yeah. 17 minutes in Ottawa to 14 in Columbus. Because he and, his, and his shooting percentage didn't change all that much. So he scored 22 goals with uh, Ottawa at 16% shooting percentage and then 15% with Columbus. He wasn't goals. good. He wasn't good. He this With the season he was having in Ottawa, mm-hmm. he could have easily gone into the summer expecting to get at least what Jordan Eberle is probably going to get. And now I just don't think that makes sense. He's he's got a he might have to take I mean it's free agency, everyone's willing to overpay. You might have to take one of those bet on yourself deals. Fifty six points in seventy six games isn't man terrible. Put him with Leon Dreisaitl. Recency bias, man. Season. man. Recency bias. <sighs> hey, you know where it could be a good fit? Ottawa. Go right back to Ottawa, man. Could be a really good fit. They got the cap space. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Marcus Johansson, Boston Bruins, had a rough season with New Jersey, but everybody in New Jersey had a rough season. Mm-hmm. Boston may not have the cap room to keep him. He kills penalties, pretty good forward, was pretty effective against the Leafs, has a little bit of toughness too. He's getting better throughout these playoffs. The problem with him, at, it seems to be the theme of this free agency class, can't stay healthy, man. Cannot stay healthy. So, I th- And that's where all these contracts bite you. It's usually not, well, the player sucks. It's usually the player's good, which is why they're getting all the money, but their body breaks down. Mm -hmm. And so he's a guy who I could see getting five, six, 
million a year, but depending on the amount of years, the the length basically determines whether or not the deal is a disaster. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. He is a good player, though. So that is that is going to be very interesting. A lot of these guys are injury prone going into this this, and it's not a particularly crazy free agency round this time. And honestly, I, I can't remember a time where it has been. Overachieving third liners have ruined the league. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think he's better than that. Mm-hmm. But it's those guys. But who, Ryan Dezingle, who if he gets four or five million bucks, even still, like I don't know if he even played that good. No, I don't think he did. It's, I think he's a great fit in Edmonton. I think you're bang on. Connor yeah. Brown, Ryan Dezingle, and who was the other guy we mentioned? Uh, Nyquist? Nyquist. You can get those three guys in Edmonton, that's a playoff team. Yeah, I, I know, and people will call you crazy, dude. Look no, at some is. of the teams that made the playoffs. You got. You need one thing. You Who's their one goalie? Thing. Who cares? Well, Koskinen is going to be their goalie. Koskinen is going to be their goalie, and it's a problem. <laughs> But but you got McDavid, so you should outscore your problems. Listen, I'm not Koskinen, saying they go deep. Koskinen look good in flashes. Mm-hmm. I think confidence is a thing that exists. So does Andrew Raycroft, though. Let's be honest. I mean, there there are goalies that look good in flashes. You need a goalie to, that's going to support you for 60 games. All I'm saying is you need one thing that makes you special. And it can't just be we have Connor McDavid. Like, it's got to be offense or defense or goaltending. And the Oilers, with the weapons that they have... Offense is still not what makes them special. If you honestly add a few guys who can skate, they're not even that mind blowing. You make it your thing, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, I, and they're in the Pacific. You burn it. The Sharks are a great hockey team. Not great on D. <laughs> not young either. If you're the Oilers, you could just skate around a lot of these guys. You, you just got to commit to it. You just got to commit to it, and you got to bring some help in. You can't be putting McDavid with Cassian and Kara, who are fine players, but playing three lines higher than they ought to be. You know if what I mean? All. If at all. No, they, they should be playing. I think that, man, the rumor, um, wasn't wasn't Kara rumored to be coming to the Leafs? It was Benning. Oh, it was, oh, it was Benning. Benning. I don't know, man. That would have been rough. Um, okay. For Brown? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, Benning for Brown. Yeah, I guess it would have been something. Team Great Britain will be back at the World Championships next year. Hey, good for them. Uh, they beat France in overtime earlier this morning. Now, the part that I think we love best is their chant afterwards, and this made it to live television. I don't know if you guys have heard this. Have you heard this? No. no. Oh, baby. You're going to have some fun. So, see if you can decipher what they're saying, because the music is awfully loud. Can I guess? What do you think? I think there's going to be swearing in it. Whoa. I, I think they're going to say shite. Here we go. <laughs> what did they say? Now we know. <laughs> hey, hang on. Try again. Now we know we are in shit. Ah. And we know we are. Uh, Wait, what? I thought it was now we know we are in shit. we're shit and and we know we are. I thought (laughs) it was now we know we are in shit because they won. Oh, maybe that's what it is. (laughs) I thought it was something else. Maybe, maybe, yo, yours is better. Yours makes more sense. (laughs) No, the original chant might have been we're shit and we know we are, but then they won a game, so now we know we are in shit. (laughs) Anyway, they're back. That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. I want to get. One are of you those getting? Jerseys. Are you getting one of the jerseys? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna wait for like the birth of the child thing because you know that's sort of mm. taking precedence. And I'd like. I always think. Why? Uh, well, it's it's funny. Like Caprice looked at me on Friday, and she's like, "Hey, you know, we need like one more shelf for the baby room. For she wanted to put succulents or something in it, and just, it would look nice. It would complete the room." And I say, Caprice, mm. who are we who are we spending this money on? Is this us or is it the baby? And she's like, "Well." I guess it would be us. I'm like, yeah, because the baby can't even see color yet, so it doesn't matter. Mother, father, there are no succulents in this room. And I said, so let's just hold back on the money for a bit and, like, have a reserve fund. Because we don't know what we don't know, man. We don't know what we need. So I'm waiting on that Great Britain jersey till later this summer because I think it's good to just save some money, put it aside, be ready in case of I got to spend a ridiculous amount of money. It's like weddings. Weddings and babies are interesting. You have item. Item A. Mm. Item A costs ten dollars, but if item A is needed for a wedding or a baby, item A costs double. Everything can I, costs double when it's a baby or a wedding. Can I 
bring something up about jerseys? Sweaters? Sweaters, if you might I, call them that. I thought you were going to rip into Adam. No, Steve. I think it's your turn. <laughs> you going to rip into me? <laughs> Why did I get tagged with a tweet that says, Hey, at Steve Dangle, you have a package heading your way. Oh, Jesse, that is a great question, because I don't know why I was tagged in that tweet. Why do you need to win a hockey thing on Twitter? I did not enter that bloody contest. Hold on, hold on. That what? Twitter account tweets me every bloody day, no way. and it's not me. No, no, a no, Twitter no, no. account called The Jersey Finder tweeted, Hey, at Steve Dangle, you have a package heading your way. No, you don't. You don't and have my And it address. says... They've screenshotted a uh, a shipping thing, and I it saw. says, congratulations, you've won this item. I saw, and I didn't respond, because no, I have The not first won. response is, Steve has too many free things already. Give me free stuff, which is a regular person who probably deserves the free stuff and I not agree. you. That person probably entered the contest. The second tweet, like Steve needs more free things, at Jesse and at Adam. Yes, I do. All right. Now Why, Steve, did you win a contest that is presumably for people who are not in a position of power? Wow. <laughs> First of all, I am the third most powerful person on this show. <laughs> Do either of you respect my authority? Adam, have no, you, you entered any free jersey contest lately? I, I have not. Steve, I... <laughs> Hasn't! <laughs> Steve... Did, does win like they remember when Iggy was on the side of the board at the Leaf game with PetSmart? Yeah, and that was not something through the podcast or through his videos. That was no. just like they entered a contest and Iggy got to be. That the, was something this, for Mrs. Uh, Dangle. Regular Joe's. Do you think Mrs. Dangle maybe entered this contest? Mrs. D <laughs> oh no. Was she using your account? Oh, she wouldn't do that. No, she wouldn't do that. Oh, did did she enter me in this contest? Did she? I don't know. You're well, asking I, me as if I know. I don't know. I don't know. Jesse, can you look I up, don't know. Can you look up whether or not I've ever tweeted these folks? What are they? Who are they? It's just at know. the Jersey Finder, and I've never heard of them. Helping you save time and money to find the best deals on authentic hockey jerseys. Well, you know, I love saving time and money by getting free things. Uh, you don't follow them. I know. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know why you won, but you did. They can't give me the thing. I haven't told them how to send it to me. It says. Also, what jersey? They have kept that uh, secret? No. I haven't won. Something is shipping to your house. It says, sale date this morning, May 20th, 1041 AM. Sale what? Wait, have I bought it? I Did assume? you buy something? No. Did Mrs. Dangle? No. Other than Raptors tickets, for the love of God. I think you need to have a talk with your wife. Yeah, I think you I think you need to have a contest, man. <laughs> Which would be the best. <laughs> That'd be the single greatest thing ever. I did it because of the Raptors tickets. I thought you could use a free thing. I'm sorry. I did not listen. No. I did not enter this bloody contest. I not. Now, funny you should say that, Jesse. Because this shirt. That I'm wearing right now, I got for free. Yeah. From a uh, British hockey apparel company. Cross, it says something in check. French, though. Clothing. And it says something in French. Ironic. Who they just beat, today. by the way, mm. in overtime today. La maison est où la glace est, eh. I think. <laughs> what does that mean? I think it means uh, the house. The house uh, it's either the house is where the ice is or the home is where the ice is. Home is where the ice is. Because yeah, maison is house. And glass is, is ice. ice. A, a, u, la, a are words as well. They sure are. <laughs> u is where, like u et la piscine, where is the bathroom? Is that, I thought it was, no, I don't know. U et la bibliothèque, where library. is the library? <laughs> and u et la receipts that I ever entered this contest, there are none. There are none. I was very confused. You'll notice I did not respond. You don't, because you don't have to, because it's already heading your way. No, it's not. Heading what way? 
<laughs> she just gonna send it to Oshawa? You gonna send it to the mayor's office? Have him call me? You have a place of business. No. People can send things to Sportsnet. They have a I suppose account. they could. I'm never getting that's this just, jersey. That's I the, did not win this all jersey. I, all I wanted to say was congratulations. Do we know what jersey it is? No, they have hidden this information. Congratulations. You won. No. Weird. That no. Is very yeah, that's weird. it. Let's do a press conference. Adam, would you like to overreact to Game of Thrones? Oh. Overreact or be correct again? Because uh, I think they're one and the same. For sure. I think they're one and the same. Oh, yeah? Uh, last night's finale, as I said earlier, was not just bad. It was the worst. It was boring. There is good and there is bad. And then there's boring. And the worst thing you can be is boring. Tepid. Lukewarm. Dry. When you watched last night's episode, it was so funny. You know, it's interesting to me watching. I've got friends that are sports fans. And i got friends that are entertainment fans. And the friends that are entertainment fans, movies, comics, whatever else that you're get, you can get into, music. People think sports fans are vicious. Well, they're vicious. But what's <laughs> interesting about those types of fans is they have such a hard time saying something they like wasn't good. Like, for me, the last Star Wars movie was was the, everything that I just described Game of Thrones as. Tepid, boring, pointless, plotless, great visuals, and no storyline. Um, it, 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 there's no character development. The main character literally has no bad side, so you're kind of wondering what the hell's happening. And the people who are Star Wars fans will try to explain away the fact that it wasn't very good. They'll come at you oh, and they'll say, yeah, I thought well, it was the opposite. They'll, they'll have some ridiculously long winded explanation as to why The Last Jedi was actually good and why you're not smart enough to catch it. Well, guess what? Star Wars is a McDonald's. It's mass appeal. It's for everybody. So if myself, and I'll give you that, I'm a university and a college dropout, so maybe I'm not the smartest guy you know. If I can't wrap my head around it, yet I could when I was eight years old when I watched the first one, if I can't at 31 wrap my head around it, maybe there's a problem. Mm. And so Game of Thrones fans came at me a little bit last night and said, well, the arcs went the way they should have. This person did this. This person did this. I'm not going to give any spoilers away here. This person did this, and it all ended the way it should have. To which I say, did that make it a good fucking episode of television? And somebody <laughs> actually argued back to me, well, it was an episode to wrap everything up. And I said, great. So you agree with me then? It wasn't a good episode of television. You can wrap things up. I enjoyed it. You can wrap <laughs> things up and make it interesting. And by the way, the conclusions they came to were also stupid. But if you, taking that aside, even if you think that's the way the character arc should have gone, that was not a well-crafted episode. The visuals were outstanding. They were amazing. But in Game of Thrones with the budget they have, that should be the bare minimum. Yes. Yes, 100%. This We sort of had this discussion, and I mean, this is a very tiny, teeny version of it, but it, during school, no one wanted to take writing courses. And when it, when it came to group projects, no one wanted to write. It's a little bit important. Writing is so hard. I think that's why people don't want to do it. It's very hard. It was great for me because I was like, well, I know I always have a job in these group projects. And also I suck at everything else. I suck at all the technical stuff. But like for me, there were practicum projects where I was like, this looks beautiful. This looks like it could be in a Hollywood movie. But it's about nothing. There's nothing that I care about. And Game of Thrones was worse than that. From an outsider, anyway. Because it... Looked beautiful, but it also just seemed like rushed and they didn't give a shit. The fact that there were drinks in one third of the episodes Water of bottles, the season. Water bottles, coffee cups. There was another one caught last night. Yeah. It was, it's clearly rushed. Well, and I think, I think that's, you know, when we, when they first announced it, I remember Jesse and I were in the studio in, in, in uh, at our last gig together and Jesse said, oh, the next, ep the next season of Game of Thrones isn't for another year and a half. And I was like, Fuck, that sucks. Mm -hmm. right? So long. Because they yeah. left us on such a great cliffhanger. Yeah. And uh, and then they come out and they say, well, we're going to make basically six movies. 
it takes three years to make one good one. Right. So have you ever thought sure. about maybe that season eight wasn't the season ended? There was two seasons wrapped. There was two seasons of ten episodes wrapped into six episodes here, and that's yeah. where they went wrong. Daenerys and we talked a... about that last episode, right, Jesse? Yeah. I don't mind the arcs. I don't mind that the ending was unsatisfactory because Game of Thrones' thing was un... You are not satisfied watching this show. That's what kept you in. It was a weird thing, but they never rewarded the audience until recently. And when I look at this, I go, HBO has the budget for this. And what was hilarious is before it, it was like it was almost like HBO knows. And I love HBO, and I'm not canceling my subscription, so let me just put that out there. That was, was my kinda, favorite meme that I saw today. There was like oh, a bunch of shows gosh. like, check out all the other great shows we have. And what, what Game of Thrones' thing was for HBO is Game of Thrones is a subscription driver. You've got shows on there that are 20 years old, like you know uh, Bill Maher, John Oliver's doing great stuff, but nobody's getting... Game, nobody's getting a subscription to HBO to watch those shows. They like those shows. The clips on the internet are great of those shows. You could say Barry, Veep, any of those things. But when you have a show that crosses over into the pop culture lexicon, like you look at Stranger Things for Netflix, yes. that drives subscription. Barry, which is apparently, uh, I, I think their fourth episode now with HBO, apparently it's on a good upswing. Okay. Breaking Bad was one of those shows, subscription driver. Subscription mm -hmm. driver, soprano, subscription driver. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that makes you want to get whatever outlet that is. Game of HBO no longer has that. And the one thing they would have had that would have been their saving grace is A, another season of this in a couple years, because they got to go they could have gone two years in between and said, All right, now the next season will be our last one. So we set up for the last season. So they could have done that mm -hmm. and let shows like Barry develop a little bit too, so you have more shows. Um and instead, for whatever reason. They tried to, to wrap it up in eight, eight seasons. And I think that's the key here. They really goofed it up when it, when it came to the amount of detail. They set a precedent in those first four seasons of slow. Slow burn, slow burn, slow. It's like watching a baseball game. Slow burn, and then all of a sudden in the seventh inning, holy shit, something happened. And then the next, the next inning's all over, and you're still not over the seventh inning. And then you're going home, and you're going, holy crap, I have to go back. Like, you're on the go train home, and you're like, oh, my God. Ugh. And then they rushed it the last three seasons. And I liked season seven. I thought they were moving at a quicker pace, and I'm like, yeah, maybe it's time. Not this fast. That's just me. Now, Jesse, you enjoyed the episode. No, it's not that. It's like, okay, all those things happened. It really sucked that it was eight seasons. Like, it definitely shouldn't have been eight seasons, like you said. So what do you think about the ennix? Full spoilers now. Full spoilers? Full yeah, spoilers? Yeah. Full spoilers! Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, as someone who didn't watch this, this show, is No, I want to hear your take. Well, yeah. I think it's stupid that Daenerys was the bad guy for literally less than a full episode. I think it's a shame. That's a full sure, no, but, season. No, but That's regardless... Full of, no, yeah, okay, those things, it should have been more. Yeah. But the the arc of the, the arc of the characters, like the way... That I don't know. The, <laughs> it, the, the, the way it, sh it should have went with her story is the way it should have went. Yes. Like, it, they had ended exactly how it should have. I agree. Her story should have... eventually should've, should've, It should have been that story. It's yeah. just it wasn't long enough. And like, okay, it wasn't long enough. But they everything was there... From the beginning to the end, how they did it is just the way getting there wasn't the best. Right, agreed. Yeah, and that's why I said like, that's a failure. Arcs. Sure, to me. Yeah, like, it's but like this. Uh, but then it's like okay, yeah, this should have been more. But then if you just take it out of that, the episode on itself on an island, it's it's okay. It was entertaining. I I was entertained. Like I wasn't sure. bored. I was it, there. <laughs> also, I thought episode. I thought the last two episodes were very entertaining. Like I was watching those. The I I enjoyed watching the ninety minutes of television. Agreed with you. Yeah. Agree with you until this yesterday's episode. Yeah, yesterday's episode because you're sitting there and you're judging it. And you're like, okay, this thing happened. You're like, ah, I hate that that happened. But I was still entertained by it. They you stole know? the ending of the Hunger Games. But why? It's, no, I've the never... real, the real enemy, the real evil is power. Is within us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I yes to... and no. <laughs> it's, it's weird for you to say that when you've never watched it and you're doing all this from no, but... internet reaction. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I know. that's why he's no. Okay. Saying, Sorry. No. The thing, <laughs> my favorite meme today. So there were two ones that stood out. Yeah. One there was Arya Stark holding who's the old man who is Filch from the Harry Potter thing. Frey. Is that his name? I don't know. Oh, Walter Frey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but so I, that didn't happen in the show. 
She didn't help. No, well, I know. She no, no, me. but she's she's holding his head to slit his throat. Okay, yeah. And uh, Aria, it says me, and for Frey, it was my HBO subscription. <laughs> no. So I thought nice, that was nice. funny. Um, but also the dragon. So the, from my from my understanding, yeah, the dragon comes upon the slain body of its mother, Daenerys. Yeah. And rather than kill Daenerys's murderer, see, it turns on the throne and burns it because the throne is the real. No. Evil. It's a reptile. No, but you've never seen the show. They're family. John and the dragon are cousins. They are. Yeah. So he couldn't. He can't kill. He can't John. kill John. They're but family. What is weird? What is weird? That's about that? stupid. What is weird was. <laughs> see, you're both. No, but right. there's magic. The show consists of like magic yeah. and stuff, like animals. There, there's the a dragons. zombie guy that can't. That didn't die with the spear to his head. You know, there's yeah. magic in the show. Yes. So this is a thing in the show. Like and the John dragon also died is family and brought back. Right? And John, there's a guy yes. who died and came back to life. Yeah. So, so the also, fact that the dragon changed faces. Yeah, she was, well, she was faceless. The, so the the what's interesting about that too is I think you're both right. Yes, the dragon couldn't kill John. Yeah. But then the dragon gets all fucking uh, ph- philosophical and goes, you know, the real issue here. Yeah. And he puts on his monocle and then he burns the throne. The dragon is a killing machine. Yeah. It's a killing monster. At no point in that show did those dragons demonstrate an ability to reason like that. To re- I think, I they, think they it did show it. The show with them eating, eating a, there was a farmer who was like, oh my God, it ate all my sheep. Yeah. Yeah. It did, they did have reason when it came to Daenerys. Like they listened to her, they understood her, they felt her feelings. Okay. So I understood on that level where it's like, oh, you know, like it happens in movies all the time when not like a, a dog, like their their master dies and the dog's all sad and stuff. I felt like it was kind of just the same. They just used the same logic. Yeah. But it for, wasn't to, that it was sad. And they just put that on a dragon where the dragon's just sad that its it, its leader died, you know? It's but then sad. the killing the throne, they, they, they did so many. Um, there was a lot of instances where they do tiny bits of stretches of imagination it's like okay like an octopus dr- playing the drums no it didn't go that far but it's like okay you have to suspend some disbelief and be like okay the dragon killed the iron throne for this fake symbolism that they wanted to put on it and you're like okay game of thrones like all right you didn't have to ruin the moment by adding on this other they, layer he right could have flown away with her because he grabs her yeah and he accidentally knocks the throne over and it's broken yeah that's what they they could have done. That. Sure, and that would have been symbolic, symbolic. without being yeah. hokey. There are too many. There are too many little hokey moments in the show that devalue the bigger moments. Like they, there's an instance where there's a book, and then the book of the history is called A Song in Ice and Fire, which is the original book that George R R Martin R R Martin George R R Martin hashtag South Park that he wrote is they called it in the show. It's called The Song of Ice and Fire, and you're like, that's so corny. Why are you doing that? There's another instance at the council meeting. Where they're like, where uh, Samuel uh, Tarth is, he comes and he's like, oh, we should do an election. And, and everyone's like, ha ha ha, we're never going to do Democracy. an election. Why, you <laughs> why would we ever do that? And that's like, ah, because people online are being like, why did you do a, a democracy? And it's like, okay, all these little hokey things are devaluing the bigger product. So those instances, like the bur- the dragon burning the throne, it's like, okay, you don't need this so it's to shite. enhance the plot. So they spend the entire. And then, and then we spend the entire, we spent ten years of our lives watching this show, to, yeah. just so that they could bow to what fucking Grey Worm wants. Are you kidding me? Yeah, the now, guy no, with the with he's the gonna die. That it we didn't. They have the they have the armies. I know. Yeah. That he, I know that he he had the unsullied army, but all the other armies in the land are around in that in that circle. Yeah. They're they have surrounded the capital. So we're gonna listen to this twerp and let Jon Snow. Their freaking brother go into the north? Yeah. Really? For so the wait, Night's Watch that doesn't exist anymore? Was he Give Did me he a end the show in prison? No. no. So there's a there's an area in the north where bastards and like criminals go. Okay. And then their original purpose was to guard the wall that protects them from death. So there's the like the zombie people yes. that they killed eventually. Yes. So their in job one episode, yes. They their job was to, uh, to protect them from those zombie people. Right. But then now the zombie people are gone. People are like, why did the Night's Watch even exist? And but, they didn't and then he and But then the Tyr- like Tyrion he says away. Tyrion says there's always needs to be a place for bastards and criminals. So that's kind of what their wa- Night's Watch purpose is, just to throw people there. So Jon Snow is now that's where he started and that's where he's ending up. 
I didn't mind that that's where he ends up because it's like you said, Game of Thrones is supposed to be this unfulfilling thing. Like Jon Snow should have never been the king of everything. No. That's too no. that's too perfect. That's too neat. That's not what Game of Thrones is about. But the way they get to these conclusions, it's too clunky. Like I it's not it's not him fun to because to be there. You think so? Yeah. I think it would have been more satisfying if he'd wanted if he'd said mm. not that he said no to the throne. But if he said, okay, now I'm fucking done. Yeah. I'll see you guys later. My my buddy with the red hair is up there. Yeah. And we're... Sorry, what are you doing? Tormund. Tormund, yeah. yeah. Tormund, yeah. If, if it makes to me a lot more sense if John wants to be there rather than he's just banished there because his sister couldn't fucking come to the plate. Like, I just... I can't... I can't see how that negotiation makes sense. And mm. that's, that's me, what bothers me. too. Me. Okay, man. It... Yeah. None of... I, I enjoy everybody's ending but not it's so clunky how they got to these endings also how much did people in scotland really like that ending a lot oh the Why? north will remain its own country oh. <laughs> really really yeah oh where have we heard this before <laughs> also i was like i was basically that was them going shout out scotland what's up shut up like, <laughs> also if sansa is queen of the north and john's just in the north why can't he just Wait, be free of the I north mean. it's her game yeah, why? That's why why does kingdom. why does he have to be banished this to is, the Night's Watch? Like how, why are we asking that question? Are, are you looking exactly. at Jesse's, why Jesse's are, body language right now? We're just slowly breaking him down. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a, there's a lot of questions, but like Daenerys is his entire story from the beginning of the from the beginning of the show. It's this little girl who thinks she has a right to the Iron Throne because her family was wrong, and she bursts these dragons and she flies to the kingdom to try and get her throne back. Yes. Like yes. that's that's the essentially what Game of Thrones is. It's her story of I want this thing and then there's all these characters around her and then her ending up dying at, at when she finally when she puts her hand on the throne her being stabbed by uh, her lover who she finds along the way that's a beautiful story yes that's gorgeous right there in a, yes. ni- in a 90 minute film if you want to make it two hours go ahead you could write that story it's gorgeous yes but the way they sped up the ending to get there context. left too many people unsatisfied context with everything is yeah. key. and that's why I almost over explain things on this podcast because Sometimes I don't want to assume people know stuff. And Game of Thrones made a lot of assumptions of, well, of course this happened. Yeah. Well, what what the fuck are you talking about? You've been so detailed in the past Mm -hmm. where if we missed even a sentence, it would fuck us up for the next eight episodes. And now we're supposed to just assume? Uh Uh-uh. This is the expectation you set us up with, and you lost context. And then when you lose context, you lose the story, and you lose the season, and that's what happened. And I think when you look at the way her arc went, I, I back to that, I agree 100%. That's the way it should have gone. And what would have been great is a season of her drunk on her own power. Yes, you need, you need yes. a full five-episode thing of her being in power at King's Landing. Because no evil Hate person, yeah. no evil person truly believes that they're the bad guy. No, Stalin and she didn't he believe was doing it. The right thing. So yeah. did Hitler. Yeah. yeah, they believe that they are doing the right thing. That co- kind of conviction mm-hmm. is the conviction that convinces other people to to sign on with them. But every single thing around, and we should have seen it sooner. Uh, every thing, single thing she did on her way to that throne was awful. Pretty sure Pete Blackburn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw that tweet. Said it before. Now she, he also made a really good point. He had a great tweet. He's like, and Tyrion. It's... Tyrion did say that in the show. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually, by the end, he got there. Um, he realized. Pete it. Blackburn made a really good point. He's like, you have Arya Stark who can change faces, mm-hmm. and they didn't use her at all for a plot twist at all. They didn't use that that at all. She didn't change faces. She didn't do anything. She was not faceless at all the entire last season. Well, yeah, in the last season, yeah, yeah, she didn't do it. And she and did it early on, on when she first got it. At the end of episode five, and then you don't see it again. It, well, you saw it when she went back to the armies, and they all had white horses. So that's where they explained it came from. Remember when she so when she wa- when armies. she walked back into the. Uh, into the sea at the beginning of this last episode when okay. she walked back she met John there like they showed a bunch of the unsullied and all the armies and some of them had white horses and stuff so it wasn't like this magical white horse it was more kind of just they kind of explained it as just it was just one of the straight white horses but it, it was perfectly timed that it happened to be there for Arya you know? and that little kid was holding a horse and the little kid was anyways um, I liked I loved Ooh. her ending Ooh. that she's now pirate ship Arya what? that was cool no one's gone Westeros <laughs> that's kind of cool Westeros if you know what I'm saying like I was like, okay, yeah, I, that's cool. So she's, I didn't so mind she's, that. Oh, she's gonna be, um, she'll be like, uh, like the Christopher Columbus. No, like, Jack Sparrow. Ah, she's, she's now Jack Sparrow. Because she's Pirates gonna go to Caribbean. the New World, yes. wherever Arr. that is, because the map just ends. You see, <laughs> yeah, Yar. yeah, Yar. So, yeah, <laughs> I can't wait for 
the next Game of Thrones, discovering North America. Season nine, she dies of scurvy. Um, <laughs> and then, and then the one thing that got everybody upset was them naming Bronn. King, uh, King. Okay, so I, as a <laughs> non-watcher of the show, know him as the guy who does nothing. Yeah, and he did nothing. And he did nothing. And he's king now. He did. What was and so then, funny is, well, earlier in like two episodes ago, when Tyrion asked him if he wants anything, and he says, "I don't want any more." And then Tyrion's like, "Hey, you should be king." And he's like, "What the fuck you think I'm here for?" <laughs> Why like, did I come all this way? Is <laughs> this yeah. is poor writing? Yes. It was very poor and writing. They, it was almost like the writers were like, yeah, 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 yeah. High five. Yeah. Let's question nothing. Yeah, we're yeah, great. Yeah. The whole season. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy stuff. And then and the fact that like he doesn't even do anything in the battle. He's like, I'm going to go away now. And he just rolls his eyes back in his head and he's supposed to be baiting the Night King. He's yeah, for that one. He's bait, yeah. What the hell is the power of the three eyed raven anyway? He could see in the past. Like, he That's can it. see the past. So he can see everything. Yeah. So they tried to reason it's like, he can see in the past, and he, he's in the present, so he uses that to build the future. That's where his, like, that's why he's going to be king. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of the Game of Thrones. It's learning part... from your past so you don't create it. You don't make that mistake in the future. My favorite uh, tweet was, wow, literally Sansa just said his dick doesn't work. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because oh, yeah. she said he can't sire heirs. Yeah. And they're like, that's a good thing. And it is. Sure. But... Because Sansa just <laughs> spills tea. That's what I learned yeah, about and, her. And, and she has a good side eye. That's yeah, what I know she does. about she things. She does. side eye. But then yeah, she's yeah. like, what was weird about that whole scene, too, is that she's like, yeah, okay, he's king, but we're not going to be here. We're not a part of this now. Like, if in real life, in a real life situation, they've gone, they've, they've surrounded King's Landing. Mm -hmm. And one of the armies is like, you know what? Even though every military presence on this island is here right now, and we're the smallest one because the North is the smallest, eh, we just don't feel like it. And none of them said, yeah, uh, we're not going to let that happen. It's trash. That's trash. The worst jump of logic was Tyrion's little speech about Bronn being like, hey, he has the best story. He should be king. When everyone sitting there, he's got no story. <laughs> everyone sitting there knows Jon Snow's story of how he's the rightful heir to the throne and once died and came back to life. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll send him to the north. <laughs> and only Grey Worm is literally the only person out of like twelve guys who are sitting there who doesn't like Jon Snow, and yet everyone's like, "All right, what would you? Let's ever banish Jon Snow to, to the Grey north. Worm. Yeah, and listen to Grey Worm. and listen to the one guy who disagrees with everybody." And not give Jon Snow the throne. That they, didn't. That didn't make sense. They were gonna kill. Gray, they were gonna kill Jon Snow anyway. Like if if they'd lost that battle, Jon Snow would have died because he was a captive. Yes. Right? But but they kept I'm, him. They kept him captive for weeks, and then Grey Worm. Grey Worm, who can't make decisions for himself. That's kind of like his thing. his thing. He has to take the orders from a leader. They make a leader, and then the leader's like, okay. Okay. I'm going to side with you who doesn't make decisions for himself and not listen to everybody else who doesn't agree with you. And Jon Snow will go to the North. <laughs> like, <that isn't... laughs> oh, by the way, my brother, who's always with that. Also, too. my brother <laughs> it is not his cousin, technically, but my brother by we grew up together. <laughs> So I should really watch from the beginning. I'm, you know what, Steve? I, I, it's a shame that you'll miss out some of the characters in the first five seasons. Well, it, but this I, is the if, thing. If, if I were to tell, if I were to say, no, you will be disappointed at the end. But I, there's a reason we watch for ten years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's uh, also, I, I don't know. even think it's like the first five. I think up until this season, yeah, I like, thought it was perfect. Season seven, Coming right. into this, I was like, this is this is the perfect series. Yeah. I didn't hate it. Yep. It's just the it was so rushed. We need. I don't know why HBO decided only on eight. Do we know that why? I don't think we do. No. And and that's that's the weird thing. Like they could have had the same, but I bet HBO gave them a budget and they said actually to do this bright we need more money. And the HBO said no. Hmm. And I don't know why they couldn't have had another season. I think it was probably because they were probably having a hard time keeping everybody together. Right? You got to think like the it's money. hard to keep championship team together. The money exactly it keeps the the actors the time. Like, yeah. like maybe there's maybe like um. What are, the, what are the writer, the main writer, Weiss and what's his face? The other guy. Yeah, the two main writers. Maybe they just got sick of it. Maybe well, they were like, we only want to do one more season. So let's just finish it. So get on with our lives. Sign on to a show like that, though, you'd have like, you're signed till season eight, and that's it. Yeah. 
But I bet that was probably like after season eight, we can't get these guys signed. It's just not possible. Hmm. There's no way we can bring everybody back. So then that would diminish the value of the last season. Although I can't imagine being an actor going, you know what, Game of Thrones? Screw you. Mm-hmm. I'm walking away. What are you doing, Steve? Why are you I, taking another Instagram video? Well, because I didn't like the first one. And also I haven't contributed for a very long time. Jesse has. Because we're talking about Game of Thrones. Jesse's, Jesse has. Jesse's Game of Thrones you. Oh. <laughs> Jesse should have a channel. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Jesse's Game G-O-T-F-R. of Thrones. G O T F R. See, Jesse remembers shit that I cannot remember. I can't. Rem- I can't remember all the details. I'm not one of those people. I just cannot do that. I can. My Harry Potter video is coming eventually. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah. Are you oh, gonna make? Have you made a video recently? I I haven't made an edited video for my own channel since Game Seven. Are Which, you ready to be done with that? Yo, yes. No, I, I've done two streams. Um, no, I have all these video ideas, and I just haven't done them. Also, that was a picture instead of a video. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I was changing Jesse, the camera. Do you have any other questions, or should we just wrap her up? Um, do you think Brianne should have been pregnant when she was writing Hell Jamie's? Yes. I thought it, I heard it. I saw it on the internet. I thought it was, they were like, oh, she should have been pregnant with Jamie's child. And she would be like, and she has a child. And that would have been a little tidbit. But instead, he, she just kind of wrote his story. Those are the best memes out there. Like, <laughs> oh, the, oh, the, the, the writing? writing in the yeah, if they the change best. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't even repeat some of them because they're so bad, but they're amazing. They're amazing. Dude. I saw there was one. There was one for my book. It was just John Tavares to leave. Oh, really? I oh, liked that. Cool. I was nice. like, I understood that reference, even though I didn't get the show. She's the one who beat up the hound. <laughs> I know that. I know that thing about her. Also, the guy with the red beard is creepy and liked her, but I don't think that ever happened. No. No. No, I don't think so either. Uh, cool show. The water bottle. The most it's unacceptable. Recent. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's unacceptable. That's it's after all that. Yeah. Do you think those those writers spent money this year? What do you mean? <laughs> the writers for Game of Thrones, the two guys that produced it. Probably, I don't. I don't know. And I don't know if it works. Pretty, that probably way. pretty high. I uh, yeah. It, dude, I don't, worked on Game of Thrones. <laughs> do you work again ever? Do you, you need to? <laughs> yeah, because you don't need to. Do you just say oh. I did this? I'm going to retire. I I think I don't know. You can't end your career with something that everyone said sucked. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. I think you, you're going to want to redeem yourself a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point. That's tough. Um, do you remember, do you know Braun? He was, uh, he's now the, uh, he was the king of Highgarden now. Yes. yes. Braun, I like Braun. Braun's always been fun. Yeah, I like him. I'm is glad it, he got rewarded. He, uh, he prioritized bringing back brothels instead of building things. That was fun. That was funny. <laughs> Braun's a good guy. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I, don't I have know any know notes. About, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's so, yeah. it. Okay. Uh, oh, other thing. Do you guys see the picture of A Rod? Do you, Do you know why he's suing uh, Fedge Hunt? Oh, Fedge Hunt. Um, the a- Wall Street people. A Rod, the baseball player. A Rod. All right. So you guys don't know about this story. No, not at all. Let's set this up. So, a viral pic of Alex Rodriguez uh, landed on Twitter. On the 16th, so on Friday. This picture is of A Rod sitting on a toilet. What? So A <laughs> Rod doesn't have uh, curtains in his toilet. I'm trying to bring up the picture. And he lives next to a giant hedge fund building. So someone, oh, no. someone who's very rich and works on Wall Street took a picture of A Rod on the toilet. Are you kidding? And the, the, over the weekend, the, up. the photo was circulating on the internet. Or not, on on emails amongst Wall Street Journal people. Wow. And A-Rod's people got a hold of this, and they're like, we're going to sue the bejesus off of these insane? guys. And then thinking? eventually, it landed on Twitter, so now you can see this photo of A-Rod sitting on the toilet. But yeah, somebody is going to be in a lot of trouble for doing this. That is messed up. Man. Imagine you're like the richest athlete to ever live. <laughs> And people are still taking a picture of you having a dump. Oh my god! Yeah, I did not know. But also, he's. What do you think? He gets more or less than the Rangers contract? <laughs> what do you mean for the for, for the photo? He's gonna he's gonna sue someone. Does he get more in compensation Ooh. than the Texas Rangers offered him? Oh, he gets he gets less. 
I know. For, he sues on principle. He'd sue if it were him. It'd be like what Taylor Swift did with that guy. She sued him for a dollar. It's not about the money. No, nah, I think it's a little bit about the money. He doesn't need the money. I don't think he's going to be cool about this like Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to get a lot of money. Mess, Isn't man. that fucked up? Yeah. Sure. What's wrong with people? Also, didn't the guy not pay the dollar? Or I something? Like I he said know. he wasn't going to pay the dollar? I don't know. I don't know. Wow. Anyway, so that was, uh, that was front page of the page six New York Post. Dude. Dude. Wait, the New York Post did not put the picture did they they did not because they will get sued yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, even the new york post wouldn't stoop to those levels uh a source told page six alex's lawyers are all over this they're working hard to find out who the culprit is it is a clear breach of p- privacy the photo was obviously taken from the building next door from a floor possibly parallel to alex's Oof. apartment one of the hedge funds in the building next door will be getting a big lawsuit if you <laughs> if you are if you are that person and you know you're that person, you're terrified right now. You are terrified because this isn't going away. Because mm-hmm. he can pay people forever to search this out. Oh, yeah. Oh. Whew. There's what? probably security camera footage that caught the person taking the picture from the other building. Oh. And I bet they're looking into it. And I bet you're also thinking to yourself, why did I do that? Yeah. What kind of a person am I? Am I that I would do that? That's an unbelievable story. How did I miss that? Yeah, I missed that one too. Yeah, crazy. It's a crazy story. Well, it's because you deleted Twitter from your phone. For a while, yeah. Oh, you it's got true. it back? Yeah. Oh. Nate's yeah, been tweeting up a storm. Did oh, we yeah. know that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, saw, oh, yeah. I saw him on Twitter, on oh, the old Twitter.com. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, Twitter wasn't the place for me. And then when I was ready, I came back to my kingdom. <laughs> it's my kingdom. I would also like to shout out page six for writing the lovely copy that... His team is urgently trying to flush out the photographer. Oh, oh that's so, <laughs> so big, <that's> Amazing. <laughs> All right, he guys. was caught with his pants down. Oh, on oh. the throne. I was about to say there's a really good Game of Thrones. <laughs> there are many. There. there are many bathroom-related jokes in this. Article. I hope they use them all. Please <laughs> use them all. Oh my God. All right. I'm all right, good. lovers. We're out of here, but we love you, and we will talk to you later this week, likely Thursday. I think Thursday. Yes. Now I'm, I'm a little concerned. If if they win on Tuesday, if if St. Louis wins on Tuesday, then we're not getting a game till Friday or Saturday night. When is game no, one? Uh, the finals? Isn't it May? I want to say twenty seventh is the earliest the final can start. So a week from today. Also, did you see the the schedule? It's really stupid. What is it? I hope whoever wins the cup wins it in five. Because then between game five and six, I think there's three days. So they and go between game six and seven. There's three days. If the Stanley Cup Finals begin on Monday, May twenty seventh, yes. So one week from today, and then they go Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Monday, Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday. The <laughs> wrap it up quick, guys. Wrap it up quick. Wow. The Stanley Cup, if it goes to seven games, Stanley Cup Finals, it goes to seven games, the Stanley Cup will be awarded on June 12th. Which actually isn't I like all that. that late. It's just why it, it doesn't need to be going that long at it's all. It's just far from right now. It's extraordinarily <laughs> far, far from right now. Why should it take three weeks? It's one round of hockey, and it's three weeks from now. Yeah. It's very odd. No. And I would kill to have my team in it. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.